Sam Houston Bearcat Baseball is on the air. Welcome to the Bearcat Sports Network and America's favorite pastime. The voice of the Bearcats, Rob Hip, has every call from the first pitch to the last strike. Now let's check in with Rob at the ballpark. All right, friends. Well, a pleasant good afternoon and welcome to another edition of Sam Houston Bearcat Baseball on the Bearcat Sports Network and over the airwaves on 101.7 FM KSAM. I'm Rob Pipp, joined by my good friend Jason Barfield as we are set here for two games today as we'll take the first one in seven, the next one in nine. There could be some fluctuations, but again, it is Sam Houston hosting the Islanders of A&M Corpus. The Bearcats taking care of business yesterday in very quick fashion in a run rule game, kicking off that four-game series with A&M Corpus, a 13-2 win in seven innings here at the Don. Uh, Jason, a good game, and you know the Bearcats looking for a win. I don't want to say desperate for a win, but they really need to start picking up some wins, and it's a good time against a very tough. I don't want to undercut what A&M Corpus has been able to do. You know, they almost took it to uh, Texas Tech there as we were at Minute Made, but this is a good, strong team, and it was a good victory for Sam Houston. Yeah, it's a big weekend for the Bearcats. You know, it, you fall. You know, we always talk about you know you lose three games in a conference weekend series. It's hard to overcome that. Well, the Bearcats opened up Southland play with a four-game four series loss against Southeastern Louisiana. So you're in an 0-4 hole. That takes a lot to overcome. They split last week with the Demons. But, you know, now you're looking at a spot where you're. it's going to take several weeks to get back above 500. So this is a big weekend, and this is a big day for the Bearcats because in the previous two conference weekends, they have been swept in the doubleheader both weekends. So they're going to be looking to kind of battle back and, and see if they can get a first one. And this first one is going to be big. It is indeed. And we talked yesterday, of course, we'll have uh – We'll talk more about this as it goes on, but yesterday, Tyler Davis, a complete game, 3-1 and one on the season. He went through the full seven innings, two runs on seven hits. He had a phenomenal game, and it's good to kind of start building some of that confidence for these young men, Jason. Yeah, and it was a different kind of outing for Davis. We had seen him a week ago against Northwestern State in a no decision. The Bearcats ended up winning that one on a walk-off, but he went eight innings, struck out 11, and was dominant in that one. This time, the Islanders were making contact. He only had two strikeouts in the game, but he worked well. He kept the pitch count low and was able to – he gave up two runs in the first two innings, and then that was it. He settled in, and he shut them down the rest of the way. You know, you flip the script on the offense for Sam Houston. Four runs in the first to get things going. The bats were hot yesterday here at the Don. We hope they'll remain that way under overcast skies. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll talk more about this one, and we'll have – this game coming up here in just a few moments. Stay with us, friends. We'll be back in a moment here on the Bearcat Sports Network. Oak Creek Homes, may I help you? Hi, I would like to meet the banker. Uh, during our Meet the Banker event this weekend? Yes. Tell me about him, the banker. Well, he's... Cute? A senior loan officer with... Lots of money. Years of experience. But he does have hundreds of thousands of dollars. He sounds perfect. Dollars to lend. Ooh. Who does he lend his money to? Just about anyone who wants to buy a new Oak Creek home. First-time home buyers, home buyers interested in land home packages. He even has special financing for folks with credit scores as low as 575. Oh, that's so sweet. And he set a goal of making 40 new home loans this weekend. He's so generous. And this weekend, he's offering special low interest rates on all loans. I love him. Oak Creek Homes, 664 I-45 South is having their Meet the Banker event this weekend. Call 936-755-4171 or go online to oakcreekhuntsville.com. Oak Creek Homes. All right, friends, welcome back. Rob Hip alongside Jason Barfield as we are moments away from getting started here as Sam Houston, of course, under head coach Jay Siriana, the Nebraska alum from 2001 in his second season, 13 and 19 all time at Sam Houston. We'll send it down now for our country's national anthem. We'll continue pregame after this. Of our national anthem.
Beautiful playing of our country's national anthem as uh, we continue here again under head coach Jay Sirianni, the Nebraska alum from 2001 in his second season, 13 wins, 19 losses, all of them at Sam Houston in the last shortened season. Of course, last year went 7-7, seven and 6-12 seven, and 12 overall this season, 3-6 and six in the Southland. The Bearcats are 4-4 four and four here at the Don, 0-6 on the road. Of course, seating just over 1,400 folks or so here at the Don. We don't have that number today, and uh, hopefully soon we'll get back to that. The Islanders, as we talk about head coach Scott Malone, the McMurray alum from 1998 and his 14th overall coaching year, 327 wins, 380 losses, two ties, all of those at AM Corpus, 8 and 10 in the sorting season last year, 31 and 26 going back to 18 and 19. This season, the Islanders 4 and 15 overall, 0 and 4 in the South, and still looking for their first victory in conference play, 0 and 7 on the road. And Jason, getting the start for, we'll talk about the Islanders here, getting the start this afternoon for the Islanders. It is the right-handed pitcher Hayden Thomas with a 2.4 ERA, 1-1 one one this season. He has pitched 30 innings. Yeah, and he's been good this year, and that's going to be a guy that they're going to look to try to, you know, in the Southland skid against, uh, you know, 30 innings this year. He's got a 240 ERA, so, you know, the season's been going well for him, 1-1 one one on the year. And, uh, you know, the key for the Bearcats is going to get to him early and see if they can get into that bullpen. Of course, for Sam Houston, talking about how they're getting going. Matt Dillard getting the start here, 0-2 this season, 20 and one-thirds inning pitch on 18 hits, 12 runs. This young man getting things started for Sam Houston, Jason. Yeah, still looking for his first win of the year, 0-2 on the season, 487 ERA. Last time out against Northwestern State, four and a third innings allowed a run on three hits. You'd like to see him go a little bit deeper here today. We'll set up the defense in a minute. Leading off for the Islanders, the first baseman, Luke Marbach. Right-handed batsman, this one on the way, just to the outside. The early count here, 1-0 to start things for Matt Dillard on the mound again for Sam Houston. Kick up the second pitch. This one hit hard foul as it'll bounce off the side of the training facility. Expect to see some hard hits throughout this game and not too much wind here this evening. We'll talk more about the weather too as this game goes on. Marbach was one for three in last night's ball game. Here's the third pitch. This one hit over to left going down near that left power alley and this one grabbed. Nice grab there by Colton Kowsers. He moved from center and we're one away. So one up, one down. A quick start here for Sam Houston. kowser has got such a good feel for that outfield. Great jump every time. Any fly ball that's hit out there, I feel like he's going to get to it. This will bring up the third baseman, second in the order, Itchy Burtz. Fantastic name. Had two at bats yesterday, no runs, but two hits to the left-handed batter. Here's the pitch. This one got the corner for a strike. Early count here, 0-1. Burt's out of League City, played at Clear Springs High School. Here's the 0-1. This one swung on, dropping over to left. Chadwick has his left glove up, and we're two up, two down. So a nice quick start here for Matt Dillard and the Bearcats. Yeah, the Islanders have elevated a couple of balls. There is a little bit of a breeze blowing out here, kind of swirling around. Watching during batting practice, guys were getting the ball out of the yard, but the wind has kind of shifted a little bit now. Kind of almost blowing into their face slightly. Third in the order, the catcher, Justin Taylor. Taylor yesterday with a run on two hits. Here's the first pitch to the right-handed batter. This one got across on an off speed. Clipped the corner for a strike. 0-1 oh the early count on Justin Taylor. I like to see Dillard getting into a little bit of a groove early on. Jason, the reason that wind picked up is because I made a comment about how it wasn't blowing much. Every time we say that, it picks up. Here's the next pitch. This one again painting the corner. How about that 0-2 to start things here on Justin Taylor? Taylor didn't like it. He stepped out of the box shaking his head, but it looked like a really good pitch from Dillard just painting on the inside half. Taylor out of Dripping Springs, Texas, just outside of the Austin area. He's a sophomore. Here's the next pitch. This one a little low. And the first ball here thrown of this afternoon by Matt Dillard. They counted 1-2. and two. Yeah, Dillard went down low, looked to see if he could get Taylor to chase something. Not a bad location on an 0-2 pitch. 
Top of the first we are. We'll take rid of that. Uh, if you're on the in the booth, we had a tally mark up there for A&M. That was inaccurate. And this next pitch, a little close to the inside to even the count twos across the board. Yeah, that's one Dillard's going to want today. He's going to hope he can get that right there on the inner half, just off the plate. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. Got him. And how about that? Three up, three down. That is a beautiful start for Sam Houston. So, of course, no runs, hits, errors. Nobody left on. We are quickly through the first half of the inning. We'll step aside and take a brief break for 30 seconds. Bottom of the first coming up when we come back on the Bearcat Sports Network. Does learning a language feel like this? No habla espanol. Hablo. It's hablo? Yes. It's hablo. <laughs> when you learn a language, you want to actually use it. Babbel is designed with that goal in mind. Since my husband is from Guatemala, I'll apply what I've learned in Babbel to our real life situations. The app is so easy to use and it's so practical. It helps you learn things that you will actually need. Babbel, language for life. Celebrating 10 million subscriptions sold. Now try Babbel for free at babbel.com. That's babbel.com. B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Welcome back, friends. Rob Hipp alongside Jason Barfield of Sam Houston Baseball on the Bearcat Sports Network. Thanks for joining us. We're live here at the Don in beautiful Huntsville, Texas. And getting the start here for the Islanders, it is Hayden Thomas. So Hayden Thomas getting those warm-up pitches on the mound right now. Yeah, Thomas, a six foot one, 190-pound sophomore. He's out of Leander, went to Rouse High School. And uh, this year he's got a one and one record, but th that ERA is what really jumps out at you. A 240 ERA, and that is starts against Central Michigan, a good Houston team, Texas Tech down at Minute Maid, a Southland Conference game against McNeese, and then UTSA. And uh, it, it's been unfortunate. He's been on the losing end of the Islanders have been on the losing end of four of his starts, but. You know, it's, it's not because of the runs that he's given up. Just not a lot of run support for him when he's been out there. And uh, the most runs he's allowed in any one game this year is four runs. He did that against Texas Tech, and he did that against UTSA. So, you know, he's the guy that's going to keep the, uh, the base runners to a minimum. He's going to keep the runs low. So the Cats, when they have guys on, are going to have to take advantage because he's not going to give you a whole lot. You know, you mentioned to him facing Texas Tech. In fact, both the pitchers have for Sam Houston as well as Hayden Thomas here for the Islanders. And the Islanders, I know we briefly touched on that. They almost came out with a victory against a very tough Texas Tech team. That game went all the way down to the ninth. Yeah, that was a good game. And, you know, he was he was the guy, one of the guys that really kept them in that. And, um, you know, it would have been a big win for the, for the Islanders as they went down there for the first time ever playing at Minute Maid and really held their own down there. Leading off for the Bearcats, the second baseman, Easton Lloyd in that two spot, Jack Rogers, Colton Cowser at third. In the middle of the order, it's Bryce Holmes, Trent Tr Touche, Clayton Chadwick, and then to bottom it out this afternoon, Mason Schultz, Wes Fulce, and Anthony McKenzie. So here's Easton Lloyd, left-handed batter, the right-handed pitch at his feet in the early count here. First ball, 1-0 the count. We talk more about Lloyd averaging 241. He's on base at 371 this season and leading off half the time that he gets up to bat as well. He's had four runs on seven hits. The next pitch, this one a little too low. And 2-0, the early count here on Easton Lloyd. He had a hit in three at-bats last night as everybody who went to the plate last night for the Bearcats got a base hit. Here's the next one. A little low into the inside. So three quick pitches here, all of them balls. 3-0 the count here. Easton Lloyd's got his options. Thomas, the right-handed delivery. He'll reach on a walk. So four pitches, and how about a leadoff walk for Easton Lloyd? We'll take it. Leadoff walks. They usually come back to bite you. So this is what I was talking about with the Bearcats. Now they've got to take advantage. They've been given a free pass. They've got a free base runner. Now you've got Rodgers and Kowser coming up. Cats have to take advantage of this. It is the first baseman, second in the order. Jack Rogers, left-handed batter. So runner on first after that leadoff walk just moments ago is Easton Lloyd. Here's Rodgers, the first pitch on the way to him, this time across the plate for a strike, 0-1. 
Thomas coming that fastball at 88. Rogers 14 runs on 23 hits this season. Also has three home runs. Next pitch to the inside ankles for a ball, one and one. We're going to see a complete contrast in styles from the Islander pitchers between Thomas here in this one and Gaddis. John Gaddis pitching in game two. He's a more of a soft tossing lefty. Here's the one one. Swung on this one over to Markotic at second, trying to go for the double play. And Boy, the Islander defense able to complete the double play. Tough break there for the Bearcats. That's exactly what Thomas needed. Chance to wipe out that leadoff walk. Have a guy coming up to the plate with nobody on, Colton Kowser. Kowser third in the order, the center fielder. Averaging 312 this season. He's on base at 443. 20 hits, 20 runs. 13 ribeyes. I like to say cooking the steaks. I don't want to talk about food too early, though, Jason. No. Here's Cal the first pitch dropped in for a strike, 0 1. Kowser had a monster day at the plate yesterday. Three hits, two home runs. He drove in five. Yeah, the grill was hot yesterday. Here's the 0-1 from the right hand. This one swung on late, goes foul off the third base side and off the training facility. We counted 0-2 here on Colton Kowser. Both of his home runs yesterday were opposite field shots. His three-run homer he hit in the first was to dead left oppo. And then he went to left center for his second home run of the day. Here's the 0-2. This time low and a bounce it took, and the count at 1-2. and two. Mentioned earlier how it's overcast, 79 degrees, a little hazy outside this early afternoon, and it was a little bit hot. I actually worked up a sweat walking around today, Jason. That's the first sweat that I think I've broke this year as far as just, you know, normal activities. You need to get out more. <laughs> yeah, no joke. One-two pitch. This one to the low ankles as well. The inside, the count of two and two. Well, you know, you, br you break a sweat when you're working out, but I haven't done a lot of that either, man. <laughs> Who has time for that? I'd say the, the working out has been all the broadcasting. You've been working out, staying so busy, coordinating everything. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Again, too close to the inside. We've got our first full count of the afternoon at 3-2 and two on two outs. Yeah, good at bat here from Kowser. Got down on the count 0-2 and has been able to fight a couple off and, and work it to a full count. Hayden Thomas on the mound here for the Islanders on the payoff pitch. It's on the way. and Boy, that hits him on the – thought it hit him. Yeah, it got it him did. on the front yep. foot. Took a little bit of time to walk off there, but so Kowser, hit by pitch, will advance over to first. Take us to fourth in the order, cleaning up the right fielder, Bryce Holmes. Two hits on two runs yesterday, brought one in. He struck out once. Yeah, he doubled in his first two at-bats last night. Just mentioned, of course, Last night, it was Sam Houston on a 13-2 victory. The run rule. Here's the first pitch. Swung on and missed here. The early count 0-1. And you mentioned earlier, of course, everybody getting into the action yesterday. That's the kind of game you want to see frequently. And a game like that can just really build the momentum of the team as well. 16 hits. We'll hope we'll see more of that here this afternoon. Runner remains on first for Sam Houston. Here's the second pitch. This one swung on, hit foul to the backstop. They counted 0-2 here on Bryce Holmes. Be curious to see if the Cats try to dial something up here, maybe put Colton Kowser in motion, see if they can get him in scoring position for Holmes, or if nothing else, moving on a hit. Still no score here in the bottom of the first. Just underway. Here's the next pitch. This one hit over. It'll drop over to left. And runners will come around at one and three. So that'll advance Easton Lloyd over to, I beg your pardon, Colton Kowser, who was hit by the pitch over to third, and Holmes with a nice single. And you just mentioned trying to get Kowser into scoring position. He'll rest over at third. Yeah. Good piece of two out hitting there from Holmes. He's down in the count 0 2. Didn't try to do too much with it, just went the other way with it, put it out in the outfield. You know Kowser's going to go first to third on that. Trent Touche with three hits yesterday. 
on four at bats, two runs scored at bat now, fifth in the order. The first pitch to the right handed batter swung on this one, goes into the net. The backstop just off that first baseline. Nearly count here, 0 and 1 on Trent Touche. Cats are getting some good looks at these pitches from Thomas early on. And you're seeing like the at bat with Holmes. He spoiled a couple, fouled a couple back before he saw one that he liked and was able to square it up. Trent Touche still looking for his first home run of the season. Here's the next pitch, swung on hard and missed on an off speed. The count 0 and 2. Thomas taking his time here. Runners remain on first and third. Sam Houston in their orange jerseys. A little bit of time called here. Touche will step out of the box. Again, Sam Houston in their orange jerseys this afternoon. White pinstripe pants with the black pinstripe. The helmets are in black. I think this is my favorite color combo. I love it. We were I was talking to you know earlier about how these jerseys just pop. Love seeing it. This next pitch, high upstairs. Good eye right there by Touche, letting that one pass him for a ball one and two. Yeah, that's a pitch Thomas is going to want. Belt high fastball just off the edge of the plate. And it was just far enough away he couldn't get the strike call. Two away, runners on first and third. This one hit, that's a base hit and a run scored. As Touche over at first, runner will advance to third. And an RBI single in two-out territory for Trent Touche. What a piece of two-strike hitting there for Touche. He saw in his vision Bryce Holmes take off running, and he just stuck the barrel of the bat out there and was able to get it past into left, into right field for the RBI. Well, I know we said we wouldn't talk about food, but start cooking those steaks. 1-0, Sam Houston with the lead here in the bottom of the first. Two outs we are. Runners on first and third. Brings up Clayton Chadwick. Chadwick swung and a miss here. 0-1 early count on Chadwick. Chadwick with a hit and four at-bats last night. Scored a run, drove in a run. RBI opportunity here. Chance for the Cats to put a crooked number on the board. Here's the next pitch to the outside. The count even at one ball and one strike. Chat with the season on base at 291. He's averaging 188. 214 and two out situations. The next pitch to his outside, two balls and one strike. Here's the pitch. This one swung hard fouls. It goes off the third base. Seen a few of those pop that way so far this afternoon. Evens the count at two and two. And he took a healthy hack at it. It was just a little bit behind. Touche resting over at first after his RBI single moments ago. Holmes over at third. Sam Houston leading 1-0 here in the bottom of the first. Two outs we are. The next pitch on the way. This one chopped over just outside of short. And another run scored, another RBI single. This time it's Clayton Chadwick getting in on the action. I, I can't even begin to tell you how good these Bearcats have been at their approach at the plate right now. All of these hits are coming with two strikes, these two out, two strike hits, and they're not trying to do too much with it. You saw it again with Chadwick there. He just went the opposite way. He took what Thomas gave him, and he was able to line it in for a base hit. He, they're not trying to yank this ball any direction. They're letting Thomas kind of dictate the location, and they're just going with it. Brings up seven in the order, Mason Schultz. First pitch on the way, hits this one over to right. It is going deep, down to right. This one is off the top of the wall. Runs will come in and score, and we'll see if Schultz can dives over to third. How about it there for Mason Schultz? A triple brings in two. The bats are hot this afternoon here at the Don. I am Stunned that, that ball did not get out of the yard. It looked like a home run off the bat. You cannot hit a ball any further out up that wall without it being a home run. I mean, that hit the very top, and now Jay Sirianni is going to ask if it hit the yellow stripe or did it catch maybe the fencing out there that's just behind, and did it hit a post and come back in? 
And I think that's the question he's asking is did it hit something just behind the wall and bounce back? Mm -hmm. I thought the ball was gone off the bat. It looked like it was carrying out of here. And I mean, that thing hit on the very top of the yellow stripe. Yeah, just right out there at the 375 mark in front of the flags. And that's why I was waiting. I wanted to call that home run, but it bounced back in. And the discussion continues here just shy of the mound. And they'll leave it as it is. But as it stands, Two RBI triple for Mason Schultz. Yeah, and that's a, for the for the umpiring crew there. That's that's a ball you can't you can't call anything but what they did. No replay here at the Don, so you know they've got to just go with the call that was on the field there. What's most impressive, if you already alluded to, this is all happening in two out territory. A lot of it in two strike territory as well. Here's the next pitch for the first pitch on the way to West Folsom. That one across the corner for a strike, 0-1. And, and this is a carbon copy of the first inning the Bearcats had last night where they put four on the board. Thomas taking a little bit here as they'll step out. They've done it a little bit differently this time. Last time it was a three-run blast by Colton Kowser with nobody out to get things going. Now they're doing it here with two outs in the inning. This pitch to the outside evens it at one and one. And good stop there by Taylor behind the plate. Ball was out in the left-handed batter's box and was able to smother it and keep it in front. Keep Schultz over there at third. One one pitch. This one a little too low. Trying to drop it in. Went too low. Two and one we are. Two away. Again, runner remains over at third. Is Mason Schultz with that? Two RBI triple just moments ago. Here's the next pitch. This one swung on, hit foul off the first baseline. Why not? You know, it's all happening in two-strike territory, so let's keep it where it's at and see what happens here, Jason. Well, that's what they're doing. They're taking really good pitches from Thomas and fouling them off and waiting for him to throw them something they can drive. Here's the 2-2. This one chopped over to first. An unassisted tag, and the damage is... Finally put to an end, but not before four runs were put on the board. The bat's hot here for Sam Houston. Getting things started here in the bottom of the first. We'll step aside and take a break. 4-0 your score. We'll be back in one minute as we climb to the top of the second here on the Bearcat Sports Network. Now's the time to get a great deal on select Kubota subcompact and compact tractors. Our reliable number one selling tractors are designed for easy operation and feature all the performance matched attachments needed to tackle any job. Right now, get zero down and 0% APR for 60 months, plus save up to $1,000. Now through March 31st, see us or go to KubotaUSA.com for full disclaimer. Stop into Huntsville Truck and Tractor today, conveniently located at 2124 Highway 30 East in Huntsville, or call us at 936-291-8103. March brings warmer weather and even hotter deals right here at Wiesner in Huntsville, just in time for the county fairs and rodeos. We've got great deals on all of our tracks, equinoxes, blazers, and traverses. You can get up to $4,750 in purchase allowance. We even have half tons, three-quarter tons, and the one-ton heavy-duty Silverados available with up to $4,250 in purchase allowance. So hurry into Wiesner in Huntsville for the best selection or shop us online at WiesnerHuntsville.com. Chevy, find new roads. Welcome back, friends. Rob Pipp alongside Jason Barfield. Thanks for joining us for Sam Houston Bearcat Baseball here on the Bearcat Sports Network and 101.7 KSAM. As we go to the top of the second inning, Sam Houston, the previous inning, taking care of business. Four runs on four hits. They leave one on. I know I've said it several times, but the bats have been hot, and that's a really good start, Jason, for Sam Houston. Yeah, and it's got to feel good for Dillard now. He had a 1-2-3 inning in the top half of the first. He comes out in the second. He's got a four-run cushion. He can now settle in. We'll start with the, hoarder, the heart of the order, 4-5-6. and six. It is the left fielder, Mike Williams, the left-handed batter here for the Islanders. The first pitch on the way. This one grounded over to Lloyd. Throw to first, and he's out. One pitch, one out. Yeah. Four in a row retired now by Dillon. Lloyd had him played perfect there. Two feet back on the grass just beyond the infield dirt. And just a little half step over to his left to field that one. Number 13, Josh Fifth in the order, the designated hitter. It is Josh Carraway back to a right-handed batter here for AM Corpus. Dillard 
Feeling confident here. Here's his first pitch. Got the quarter for a strike, 0 and 1. Beautiful pitch. Caraway, eight runs on 11 hits this season. He has struck out 18 times. Next one, again a strike. As the pitching here from Dillard continues, he is finding it where he wants it here this afternoon. On deck is Brendan Ryan. The 0-2 pitch. Swung on and missed. Struck him out for the second out. Yeah, Dillard's looking locked in right now. Two outs. Right fielder, number 10. As it'll take Brendan us a six in the order, the right fielder, Brendan Ryan. Nobody on. Sam Houston leading 4-0 here in the top of the second. Islanders at bat, the first pitch, and another swing and a miss here on Brendan Ryan. Here's the 0-1, the right leg kicks up, left-handed pitch to the outside, one ball, one strike, two away. Dillard came into this season ranked by D1Baseball.com as the number 17 draft prospect in the Southland Conference for this upcoming draft. The 1-1, swung on and missed, one and two. Pitching domination continuing here for Matt Dillard. I think a lot of what happened Friday is really building some confidence here with Sam Houston. They needed it. A very convincing victory last night, 13 to two. And they have not slowed down so far starting here this afternoon. Here's the one, two. Chop foul as it gets up under it and goes way out there in front of the training facility off the third base line. One and two, the count remains. A little battle starting here for Brendan Ryan. Dillard. The pitch. Swung out and missed. And got him for the third out. So back-to-back -back strikeout swinging. No runs, hits, airs. Nobody left on. Six in a row retired by Matt Dillard. And we are through one and a half. Bearcats back at bat. When we come back, bottom of the second coming up in a minute on the Bearcats Sports Network. Trivia. It's a new year with new opportunities. Scrap metal prices are the highest in years, and TJ Burdett has money for yours. For over 45 years, TJ Burdett and Sons Recycling has served Walker County with the highest prices and straight deals. Right now, get a multi-year high $7 per 100 pounds of scrap steel and $9 per 100 pounds of short iron. Bring your scrap and get some scratch. The most in years, TJ Burdett and Sons, exit 118 North I-45, just past the Shell truck stop. Visit TJ Burdett and Sons on Facebook for more info. Eric Barbosa with Henson Chevy Buick GMC. During Chevy Truck Month, we're rolling back prices on our hottest trucks and SUVs. Our low prices are now even lower on all new Chevys like 2020 Silverados and GMC Sierras. Save even more with 0% for 72 months and make no payments until the summer. Plus get a warranty for life with no deductibles and unlimited miles at no cost to you. We even deliver for free from our store to your door. We get you rolling for less at Henson Chevy. We're dealer for life. Henson Chevy online at HensonChevy.com. Back at it here from the Don. Thanks for joining us for Sam Houston Baseball. Bottom of the second we are. Bearcats leading 4-0, hosting the Islanders of Corpus Christi this afternoon. We'll start at the bottom of the order now for the Bearcats. Anthony McKenzie, the freshman, averaging 118 this season. McKenzie had a run and a hit last night. Was left on twice. Sam Houston. Four of six already to start this ball game. Hayden Thomas's first pitch. This one swung on. And Fallon goes behind the fence off the third base side. The early count here. 0-1 on Anthony McKenzie. McKenzie. Next pitch on the way to him. Had to... Move out of the way of that one. It was too close inside, one and one. Last night, McKenzie just missed a home run. 
pulled one foul down the right field line, put it into that tree just to the foul side of the foul pole. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Going to check down over at third and call the strike one and two. Pulled back on a swing, but it was already across. Count here, one ball, two strikes. Bottom of the second, Sam Houston leading 4-0. Thomas kicks up his left leg, the right-handed. This one hit over to Short, trying to beat this one out. And yes, he got there in plenty of time. It's a leadoff single for Anthony McKenzie here in the bottom of the second. Yeah, good play out there at Short by Fluta. Made the dive, gloved it. But with McKenzie's speed, really had no chance to make the play at first. And where were we at again in the strike count? Two strikes. <laughs> That's been the story here so far for Sam Houston. We'll go back to the top of the order. It is Easton Lloyd. Reached on a walk. Was out as part of that double play back in the first. Here's the first pitch as he shows bunt. This one goes foul into the backstop. 0-1 count here on Easton Lloyd. So McKenzie over at first, Sam Houston. The nice cushion here leading 4-0. This is the first game of our doubleheader. Thomas will look over at first. Now back in the set, here's the right-handed pitch. This one also hit foul. 0-2. And Lloyd, first pitch, showed bunt, fouled it back. Kind of had itchy Burtz over there at third, creeping in a little bit, and then took a full hack on that second pitch. Here's the 0-2 pitch on the way. This one chopped over to first. The tag is made. And the runner, though, is safe at second. They're going to call it foul. Oh, they're going to call it foul. Okay. Took a second there. Yep, it went foul just at the last moment. It was just to the right of that first base bag. That was close. Inches. So the count remains 0-2. Nice at bat here for Easton Lloyd. Here's the pitch. High to the outside. One ball, two strikes. A lot of friends joining us on our In the Booth social media feeds. We'll get to more information about that here in just a moment. The count one and two, pitch on the way. And I guess they called with a little swing there. And he's yeah, out. Said he said yep. he went around on that. Swung around on it. Wasn't a hard swing. He didn't want it. He pulled back on it, but they say he went around, and we are one away. We'll call it a strike swinging. Takes a second in the order, Jack Rogers. Rogers was out on part of that double play back in the first. Here's the pitch on the way. Fastball, swing and a miss, 0-1. Took a healthy cut at it there. Couple base knocks last night for Rogers. Scored a couple runs, drove in one. First pick attempt, throws it over to first. Thomas to Marbach. And to set that defense, Justin Taylor is the catcher. Luke Marbach over at first. Leo Markotic at second. Itchy Burtz at third. Cole Fluta over at short. And then left to right is Mike Williams, Tristan Welch, and Brendan Ryan. Next pitch to the outside. Aces across the board. Tony Kulak joining us. Appreciate you, Tony. Thanks for joining us. Our good friend Liz Tompkins listening from Colorado Springs, Colorado. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Too close to the inside. 2-1 Two and one the count. It's one thing how things have changed over the years. Of course, Jason, with the Internet, of course, and people can listen, enjoy coverage from wherever they are. Here's the 2-1. Again, a little too low as it dropped down. Three and one. Options here for Jack Rogers.
Three balls, one strike, one away. Runner remains over at first is McKenzie after his leadoff single earlier. Here's the 3-1 pitch. This one chopped foul off the first baseline. Took a bounce into the wall just to the right of the Islanders' dugout. And the count now full at 3-2. and two. Yeah, Rogers chased one down and in, was able to get a barrel of the bat on it. It was a good pitch from Thomas, just kind of buried it in towards his feet. Wasn't a whole lot Rogers would have been able to do with that pitch. This pitch to the outside, and it's a ball. So Rogers will reach on a 3-2 walk, and that will force McKenzie over to second. Bring up third in the order, the center fielder, number 17, Colton Kowser. He was hit by a pitch and then able to come around and score part of Mason Schultz's three RBI triple back in the first. Pitch on the way. Kowser able to drop this one over to the right, and we've got bases loaded. No, that nope. one hit Rodgers on the foot, so it he's going to yeah. be out. Yep, hit him on the foot. Unfortunate there for Sam Houston. And unfortunately, yeah. McKenzie has to go back to second base now, too. The runners at one and two. Right fielder, number nine, Bryce Holmes. Brings up Bryce Holmes, fourth in the order. He singled back in the first, came around and scored the second run, part of the two that came in, in two away, or with that two-out territory, this is where it starts for Sam Houston. Here's the pitch on the way. This one close to the inside, one ball, no strikes. Yeah, that's a tough break on that last one, especially for Rodgers. You know, he feels awful. Nothing is worse than as a base runner knowing that you took a base hit away from one of your teammates. Ball just clipped him on the foot. Here's the pitch on the way. This one chopped over to first. Fielding it is Marbach and the flip over to Aiden Thomas, and we are three away. A tough break for Sam Houston. And there were two runners. As two left on for the Cats. We'll step aside and take a break. Top of the third coming up. Sam Houston leading 4-0 here on the Bearcats Sports Network. They don't build cars like they used to, and they don't repair them like they used to either. Today's vehicles contain advanced lightweight materials and safety features like crumple zones and sensors that help protect your family. Repairing them properly after a collision requires up-to-date training. Amaya's Collision Center at 686 I-45 has it. They're among only 15% of shops to meet the industry's highest training standards as a gold-class business. When you pick a collision repair shop, make the smart choice for your family's safety. Choose gold-class trained repair professionals. Choose Amaya's Collision Center, 686 I-45. Why are people driving from all over Texas to Weezer Hyundai to get a real deal? And during Hyundai Spring Upgrade sales event, save even more. Get a 2020 Hyundai Sonata SEL or a 2021 Tucson SE your choice, $19,888. Or 0% for 72 months plus $1,000 plus no payment for 90 days. Or a 2020 Hyundai Santa Fe SEL, only $24,888. Or 0% for 72 months plus $1,000 plus no payment for 90 days. Exit 87B, Wilson Road in Conroe or WeezerHyundai.com. Check out America's best warranty, 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain limited warranty, and the Hyundai Assurance program today. Welcome back, friends. Rob Hipp alongside Jason Barfield. Sam Houston baseball here on the Bearcats Sports Network. Sam Houston leading 4-0 as we start things here in the top of the third. And we'll go to the bottom of the order. It's a 7-8-9 and nine for the Islanders. We'll start things with the second baseman, Leo Markotic. So Markotic to lead off here. He is a right-handed batter. A&M Corpus in their blue jerseys. Gray pants. Islanders written across the front in white. A little bit of pinstripe on those jerseys as well. Dillard trying to continue his work here this afternoon. Right kick up, left-handed delivery. This one chops over to Schultz at third. And the throw to first. And in plenty of time, that is now seven in a row. Retired by Dillard. Good work there by Schultz over to Rogers at first. You love a one pitch, one out to start off an inning. Seen a couple of those here so far. In fact, 
I'm looking at it correctly, I believe every leadoff here so far has been a one pitch, one out. He's only thrown 20 pitches now through two and a third. Bring up Tristan Welch, the center fielder, eighth in the order. Here's Dillard's pitch on the way. Pulls back on a bunt, but it goes across the plate for a strike, 0 and 1. Yeah, Welch didn't like it. Kind of stepped out, shook his head a little bit. Here's the next pitch by Dillard. What a beautiful pitch as it painted the corner. Yeah, right now Dillard is just in complete command of his fastball. Hitting 89 on the gun. He's putting it right where he wants it. 0-2, oh, one away, nobody on. Sam leading 4-0 here in the top of the third. Islanders at bat is Welch. Here's the pitch. This one dropped too low. One ball, two strikes. Fairly decent crowd out here today at the Don. As Folks starting to get back out and enjoy things on a one-two. This one over to right as Holmes with the left glove up, and we are two away. Shortstop Saw one over line. earlier to Chadwick back in the first, and now Welch. I beg your pardon, uh, Holmes getting a little busy out there over at right. Take us to the bottom of the order, the shortstop, Cole Fluta. Fluta, right-handed batter. Here's a left-handed pitch on the way. Too far to the outside, 1-0. Well, 88-mile-an-hour fastball. Fluta averaging 250s on base at the same percentage. The next pitch. How about that on the corner as it came in across for a strike one and one. Yeah, Fluta hadn't seen a lot of action. Got his first start last night. One hit and four at-bats this season. Here's the one, one, two out pitch. Too close to the inside. Nice 90 mile an hour fastball on that one, two and one. You can hear the Bearcat fans behind the plate. They wanted that call. Dillard with the delivery. This one hit foul at the top of the net on the backstop. The count here on Fluta, two and two to even it up. Dillard's pitch. This one a little low as it Bounced in front of the plate, three and two. First time that Dillard has been at a full count here so far this afternoon. Taking his time, Dillard puts the glove up. Here's the kick and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Nine in a row retired by Matt Dillard. On a 3-2 pitch, no runs, hits, airs, nobody left on as we're through two and a half. Bottom of the third coming up on the Bearcat Sports Network. They don't build cars like they used to, and they don't repair them like they used to either. Today's vehicles contain advanced lightweight materials and safety features like crumple zones and sensors that help protect your family. Repairing them properly after a collision requires up-to-date training. Amaya's Collision Center at 686 I-45 has it. They're among only 15% of shops to meet the industry's highest training standards as a gold-class business. When you pick a collision repair shop, make the smart choice for your family's safety. Choose gold-class trained repair professional. Choose Amaya's Collision Center, 686 I-45. Eric Barbosa for Henson Ford. During truck month, we're rolling back prices on America's best-selling truck. Our low truck prices are now even lower on Fords like 2020 F-150 Supercrew, XLT, and Expeditions. Save even more with 0% for 72 months and make no payments until the summer. Plus, get a warranty for life with no deductibles and unlimited miles at no cost to you. We even deliver for free from our store to your door. We get you rolling for less at Henson Ford. We're dealer for life. Henson Ford. HensonFord.com. 
Welcome back, friends. A pleasant good afternoon. 3.43 the time here in East Texas at the Don in Huntsville. Thanks for joining us for Sam Houston Baseball. Cats leading 4-0 as we're through two and a half. Bottom of the third coming up and leading off fifth in the order. It is Trent Touche who's one for one so far today. Had the RBI single back in the first. Hayden Thomas still trying to find a way to settle into this ball game. Given up four so far, but back in the second, was able to hold on. Now it was big for Thomas last inning to keep the Bearcats off the scoreboard. Kind of helped settle him into the ball game. The pitch on the way to Touche. This one to the outside on an 87 mile an hour fast ball. The early count 1-0. Oh. It was also big for Scott Malone, the head coach. You know, if Thomas gives up a couple more runs there, you got to really start thinking about what you're going to do with your bullpen. Here's the 1-0. Again, too far to the outside. Trent Touche finds himself ahead here, 2-0. and That said, though, seven-inning ball game, you can't let this one get away from you. So if he does get into trouble here in the third, Scott Malone's probably going to have to think about what he's going to do with that pin. And next pitch also too low to the outside. Three pitches, three balls thrown here by Hayden Thomas. Cats have reached on a walk a couple of times and now make it three times this afternoon. Six in the order, Clayton Chadwick. Chadwick had the RBI single back in the first. Here's the pitch to the lefty. This one hit over to left and just foul. It was trying to stay fair, and then a little bit of wind may have pushed it out there to the left, and it went over the fence at the 330 mark. Yeah, just tailing away. I think Chadwick knew it right off the bat. He never saw him even leave the batter's box. A one here on Clayton Chadwick. Next pitch on the way. Boy, that one behind his leg. Runner going to take off over to second. Sliding, diving in time. And now the pitch gets away from the catcher over there to Leo Marcotic at second. And another base for Trent Touche on the air over to third. Yeah, Touche, good heads up. He saw the ball hit. The pitch was actually behind Chadwick. Taylor able to smother it, but then his throw down to second was high. Sailed into center field and allowed Touche to take an extra base. So Touche with the stolen over to second, then reached a third on the air there by Taylor. And we're going to have a little discussion at the mound here. Now you take them how you get them. Sam Houston having the eye here this afternoon, staying alert, knowing what to do in situations, and holding on to that 4-0 advantage. Uh, it's all freebie bases right here for Touche. He had the walk, and then you go to second on a wild pitch and then third on an error, so. Home plate umpire David Frame gonna head over to the mound and puts his hands on his waist. He's letting him talk a little bit. Normally you go over there and you immediately say, okay, break it up. He's gonna let him chat for a little bit longer. Yeah, just kind of <laughs> standing there watching the conversation go. <laughs> yeah, typically you don't see that. When he makes his way over there, he's ready to break him up, but boy, Took a nice little 15, 20 second break up there. Now we'll get back into action here. Again, the count one and one here on Clayton Chadwick. As Trent Touche over at third for the Cats. No outs. Sam Houston leading 4-0 here in the third as the infield will shift in a little bit here now. So yeah, everybody Islanders, coming in. Islanders brought the infield in. It was weird, though, because they did it in the middle of the pitch. <laughs> so ever, nobody was in their set position when the pitch came. Next pitch, a ball as well. So now the count three and one, Clayton Chadwick. Here's the three one on the way to Chadwick. This one drops over to left. Cook some more stakes. The Bearcats put another one on the board. Yeah, another good piece of hitting there for Chadwick. Once again, went the other way with it. And other than the ball that Schultz hit, that he hit off the top of the wall, everything else has been to the opposite field for the Bearcats today. 
it is another RBI single for Clayton Chadwick. And the Cats leading 5-0 here in the bottom of the third. And something happening finally with no outs on the board. Mason Schultz swing on here as it goes foul to the net. 0-1 early count here on Mason Schultz. He had that RBI, two RBI triple back in the first. Now we're seeing some action down in the in the A&M Corpus bullpen. Thomas, pitch on the way. The outside on the fastball, 89 miles an hour, but it goes too far out to even the count at one ball and one strike on no outs. Sun trying to make an appearance here through the overcast skies. This one hit hard over to center. It should drop. Welch getting under it. And no opportunity there for Chadwick to advance. So we're one away here in the bottom of the third. Bring up eighth in the order, the catcher, Wes Foles, who is 0 for 1. He was out for the third out, unassisted over at first, back in the first inning. Pitch on the way, runner will take off over to second, sliding, diving, and he is there in time. It's another stolen base for Sam Houston, this time Clayton Chadwick. Third stolen base of the year for Chadwick. He's now got that percentage up to 50%. He's three for six on the base pads this year. West Foles, 0-1. Next pitch on the way. Clip the corner for a strike, 0 and 2. Thomas keeping an eye over there at second. Here's the pitch. This one swung on late. Hard foul off the first base side. May go in a little bit of a Berm seating area over there. The count remains 0 and 2. Patrons in the SRO section down the first base line are expected to police themselves and properly social distance at all times. O2 count. Sam leading 5 0 here in the bottom of the third. As a little bit of time is called, West Foles will step out of the box. Hits the bat on his right cleat. Now back in as he'll dig back in. 0-2, Hayden Thomas looking down, checks back over at second, shrugs his shoulders, another check, and now the throw to second, this one getting away, and a runner will advance over to third on the air there by Hayden Thomas. Well, it's a little deja vu here, Jason, because we go back to Trent Duche, the only thing different was he reached on a walk, he stole a second, and then the air by the catcher, well, now it's... A hit here by Chadwick, the stolen base to second. He will reach over to third on an error this time by Thomas. Yeah, and Thomas had him. I mean, Chadwick was jumping towards third. A good spin by Thomas and uh, just a really errant throw. Here's the next pitch. Curves too far to the outside. One ball, two strikes, one away. West Foles. Here's the one-two. This one a little bit low here. Taylor able to get behind it. Evens the count. Two balls, two strikes. The Islanders are once again now with a runner at third, bringing the infield in on the grass. Pitch on the way to Fulce. This one too far to the outside. Full count at three and two. And Taylor really having to bounce around back there behind the plate. Thomas bouncing that curveball in. I mentioned Taylor earlier. Got to give him, give Taylor credit. Is he's having to get behind a lot of them here. Here's the 3-2 payoff on its way. And it's another walk. West Fulce over at first. Chadwick at third. And we should have a pitching change. 
And we will. We'll step aside for a minute. We'll have that change and more for you when we come back. Stay with us. This is the Bearcat Sports Network. Oak Creek Homes, may I help you? Hi, I would like to meet the banker. Uh, during our Meet the Banker event this weekend? Yes, tell me about him, the banker. Well, he's... Cute? A senior loan officer with... Lots of money? Years of experience, but he does have hundreds of thousands of dollars. He sounds perfect. Dollars to lend. Oh, who does he lend his money to? Just about anyone who wants to buy a new Oak Creek home. First time home buyers, home buyers interested in land home packages. He even has special financing for folks with credit scores as low as 575. Oh, that's so sweet. And he set a goal of making 40 new home loans this weekend. He's so generous. And this weekend, he's offering special low interest rates on all loans. I love him. Oak Creek Homes, 664 I-45 South, is having their Meet the Banker event this weekend. Call 936-755-4171 or go online to oakcreekhuntsville.com. Oak Creek Homes. Welcome back, friends. Rob Pipp alongside Jason Barfield. Thanks for joining us for Sam Houston Baseball here on the Bearcat Sports Network. Bottom of the third, we are in the pitching change as Jaime Ramirez now on the mound. The lefty is 6.1 ERA. He is 0-1 this season. Pitched 10 and one-thirds innings, allowing eight runs on 11 hits. Seven of those runs were earned. He has walked nine, struck out 10. Again, it is Jaime Ramirez getting those warm-up pitches now for the Islanders. Yeah, last time out for Ramirez was against UTSA last weekend. Six days ago, he went two-thirds of an inning against the Road Runners. Walked two batters, did not give up a hit or a run in that outing, and struck out three. So Hayden Thomas will finish with two and a third's innings pitch, five runs on seven hits. He's still responsible for the two that are on for Sam Houston. Fulce over at first, Chadwick over at third. Only one strikeout for Thomas, walked four. One wild pitch, also sent one to the tattoo shop. He'll finish up with a 3.34 ERA. 68 total pitches for Hayden Thomas. Shortstop, number two. So he'll take us to the bottom of the order, the shortstop, Anthony McKenzie. McKenzie, one for one so far today. Left stranded out there on second, back in the second. Here's the first pitch on the way. This one to the low corner for a ball, 1-0 early count, Anthony McKenzie. Yeah, McKenzie's going to go up with a patient approach at the plate, get a chance to see what Ramirez has to offer. Ramirez, a lefty to the right-handed batter. This one again to... Close on that corner, and I talked about Taylor, you and I both, he's having to get behind him again here now for the new pitcher, Ramirez. Yeah, really staying active behind the plate. He's easily saved a couple of extra bases already. Jaime Ramirez, a 2-0 count, here's the pitch. This time across the plate, on an off speed for a strike, two and one. Yeah, McKenzie's focus here is to get that run home from third, however you have to do it, whether it's elevate a ball into the outfield, just hit something the opposite way, anything to get that run home. Here's Ramirez's next pitch. Too far to the outside, three and one. Ramirez out of San Antonio, Texas, 5'10", 190 pound freshman. Always enjoy going down to San Antonio. Here's his next pitch. This one chopped. It will bounce over to Short, trying to go for the double play. The throw is there at second, and it is in time over at first as well. And a good job there by the Islander defense to retire the inning. One run scored by the Cats in the third as we will go to the top of the fourth. We'll be back in a minute here on the Bearcats Sports Network. Adams Furniture in Huntsville is looking for warehouse delivery persons for local and out-of-town deliveries. Must be clean and dependable, full-time or part-time. Good pay, paid vacation, and overtime is available. 
must have a valid driver's license, must be outgoing and personable, as this position involves being the last person the customer will see to leave a great impression. Apply in person at Adams Furniture at Highway 75 North and 10th Street in Huntsville. Adams Furniture is an equal opportunity employer. This is Tim Rushing with Charlie's Used Cars. As most of you have seen or know, we are being affected by the I-45 freeway expansion. I assure you we are open and ready to serve you with your next vehicle purchase. We have driveway access off the I-45 feeder road as well as easy access off of Normal Park Drive. Charlie's Used Cars has been serving the area for 48 years and offers quality pre-owned vehicles and superior customer service. I encourage you to stop by and see us at 230 I-45 South here in Huntsville or visit us online at Charlie's Used Cars. Back at it, friends. Approaching 4 o'clock here in East Texas. Rob Hip alongside Jason Barfield, Sam Houston Baseball. And Jason, we're at the 4, 5, and 6. I'm going to hand it over to you, man. All right. It'll be 1, 2, 3 in the corpus order here. Marbach will lead it off against Matt Dillard. Dillard so far, three innings, has not allowed a base runner, four strikeouts. Marbach sent a fly ball into center field his first time up. Dillard out there with a 5 nothing lead. He has just looked so confident, so comfortable through the first three. Marbach a 348 average on the season. First offering on the way from Dillard. Fly ball lifted deep into left field. Chadwick goes back, looks up. It's gone. Wow. Home run number three of the year for Marbach, and there goes the no-hitter. Perfect game, all of that, and one swing of the bat. Boy, just got under that one and laced it over there to left. Took a nice pop-up, kept going. Just made it look really easy. So, time for Dillard to regroup. Itchy Burtz will stand in, 0 for 1 today. Fly it out to left field his first time up. Offering on the way from Dillard. Fastball, that one misses down and away. Burtz had shown bunt, pulled it back. Burtz a 306 hitter on the season. One-0 pitch on the way, and that is a high chopper fielded by Rogers, tossed to Dillard, and he wins the foot race to the bag. Nice job there as Dillard coming back, and as you said it, getting there quick and making it. You know, you mentioned earlier, too, about uh, Itchy Burtz. We talked about his name. He was also he was voted baseball's America's number one name in college baseball. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it's always been a good one. Justin Taylor will stand in here for the Islanders. Taylor was a strikeout victim in the first. Offering on the way from Dillard. Well, didn't mean to. Half swing there from Taylor. Came in on him. One of four strikeouts for Dillard. A one offering on the way. That fastball is in for a strike. Dick Dillard quickly out in front, 0 and 2. A nice heat behind that one at 89, painting that corner. O2 offering on the way from Dillard. Line drive out into left field. Chadwick on the run. We'll play it on a second hop. And we'll quickly hustle it back in. Second hit of the inning for the Islanders. So second time through the order, starting to feel a little more comfortable against Dillard. Yeah, I mentioned earlier coming into this inning how confident Dillard has been and see if he can work through this here. Mike Williams will hit. 0 for 1 today, grounded out his first time up. First pitch in for a strike. Dillard would take another ground ball to second. See if the Cats could roll a double play. Go, 
A one offering on the way, curveball, a little soft pop-up, back behind second. Kowser on the run. Kowser dives. He can't come up with it, and the throw to second will not be in time. Just kind of dropped a ball out into no man's land. And even then, Kowser nearly came up with it. He's right below the S on the big SH logo out there at center. Tough one there for Kowser. So three hits in the inning now against Dillard after he was in cruise control through the first three. Caraway will stand in now. Caraway struck out his first time up. Two on, one out for the Islanders. One run already in here in the fourth inning. First pitch from Dillard. That one is lined but will be foul. Just got out in front of it. But second time through the order, these Islander hitters are seeing Dillard a lot better. Yeah, retired nine in a row, and I guess they had enough of it. They must have had a little chat there and said, we got to get back into this one somehow. A one pitch from Dillard. Fastball missed outside. Evens the count up. One ball, one strike. A leadoff home run for Marbach here in the fourth. Has started a little rally for the Islanders. Two on, one out. Pitch on the way from Dillard. That one is lined, but foul. Once again, Caraway out in front of it. I've seen a couple of those identically in the same spot, pretty much in foul territory there by. Caraway. The freshman out of Roanoke, Texas, Josh Caraway, having a good at bat here. One ball, two strikes. Offering on the way from Dillard, bounces in, smothered there by Fulce. Kept it in front, the count will even up, two balls, two strikes. Yeah, Fulce did a good job staying behind that, not allowing it to slip away from him. Those runners on one and two, you don't want to spell any trouble here. So counts even up, two balls, two strikes. Can Dillard dial up the double play ball? Let's see what he's got here. 2-2 two -two offering on the way. Fastball, letter high, and the count goes full. Three balls, two strikes. Second time this afternoon that Dillard has been in a 3-2 situation. Happened against Cole Fluta back in the third where he struck him out swinging for the third and final out of that inning. Do the Islanders try to dial something up, put the runners in motion here on a 3-2 pitch. This time is called for by Caraway. Caraway on the year is a 208 hitter. Better with runners on, 278 with runners on. Three two pitch on the way from Dillard. That one is fouled off. Good at bat here for Caraway, able to stay alive. Had a few of them hit foul, but most important thing for this young man, he's able to stay in. Dillard taking a long look in. Now set and ready. 3 2 pitch coming, fouled back off the screen. Dillard went with the curveball there. Caraway able to spoil it. So once again, Dillard will bring a 3 2 pitch to the plate. Now he'll look back at second. Spin and he chases Taylor back to the bag, just trying to make sure the runners aren't trying to get a head start. There's a lot of muscle on Caraway, 6'1, but 216, but that's all muscle. Three two offering on the way. Swing and a miss. Big strike out there for Dillard for the second out of the inning. It's the second time this afternoon on a payoff pitch on a 3-2 count that Dillard was able to strike him out swinging. Five strikeouts now in the game for Dillard. 
And now he's got a chance to get out of this inning with just the one run allowed. It's Brendan Ryan will stand in. Ryan struck out his first time up. 385 average on the season. 10 hits and 26 at-bats. Dillard set and ready to go. First pitch, fastball missed outside. Dillard sitting right about 89-90 on his fastball today. one offering coming from Dillard. Same spot, same call. 2-0. We're going to make a little bit of a journey down to South Texas at Corpus by way of Leewood, Kansas. You ever been to Leewood? I have not. I have not either. I hear it's lovely. Driven through Kansas one time on my way to South Dakota. In fact, we got a ticket in Nebraska. A little bit of time is called here. We got a ticket in Nebraska. At the time, the speed was 55 miles an hour. I was a young man. I remember my dad getting pulled over and... He says, there's something wrong with y'all's speed limit here. It's 55, you know, in Texas, it's 75, 80. <laughs> Needless to say, it didn't help his cause. He got a ticket. 2-0 pitch coming. Fastball in for a strike. Interesting there from Dillard. As he turned and looked, McKenzie went to cover the bag. Normally, your pitcher will let your shortstop get reset. He didn't do it and then just whipped around a fastball. Ryan took it. May have snuck one by him there. So the count's two and one to Brendan Ryan. Two on, two outs. Pitch on the way from Dillard. That one is fouled off. And Dillard now a strike away from getting out of the inning. And is that the sun trying to peek through there, Rob? Yeah, I mentioned earlier we it's been overcast, but the sun keeps coming out. And I'm telling you, when it comes out, it only comes out for maybe 10 seconds at a time and then just goes right back to shade again. The only way you know is those orange jerseys start glowing when the sun comes out. A little bit of sun on the right cheek of Matt Dillard on the mound. 2-2 two -two pitch, grounded out to second, fielded there by Lloyd, and a little bit of a bobble, and he threw the ball away. That will allow at least one run to score. And Lloyd might have been better suited there just to stick the ball in his back pocket after he made the play. Tried to make the throw to first. Bit of an ill-advised throw. Threw it wide of Dillard, who was covering the bag. Dillard then had to run all the way down behind home plate to retrieve the overthrow. Yeah. Jay Sirianni's out to have a chat, probably just to calm everything down right now, and if nothing else, give Dillard a chance to catch his breath after having to sprint to catch that overthrown ball. Yeah, and you kind of slip. You saw that slip down there at first a little bit, trying to make that grab. That mound discussion going on. Well, Dillard, through three innings, had retired nine in a row, but the Islanders have not been a friend to him here in the fourth. Giving up two runs. One of those on an air just moments ago. <laughs> conversation over out there. So the run will be unearned against Dillard. That'll be the first error of the day against the Bearcats. Runners at second and third now for the Islanders. And the first pitch, that one looked pretty good. Marcotic took. So count is 1-0 and oh here. Marcotic grounded out to third his first time up. Pitch on the way, fouled back against the screen. Really making Dillard work here in the fourth. Two runs already in, but two more in scoring position. 
in what was looking comfortable so far for the Bearcats. One swing of the bat could make this a one-run game. Four hits now in the inning for the Islanders. 1-1 one, one pitch on the way, and that one's going to get in for a base hit down the line. Two runs will score. Chadwick cuts it off, fires it back in, but it's a two-RBI double for Marcotic, and this is now a 5-4 ball game. Yeah, things just deteriorating here for Matt Dillard. And that's going to send some guys down to the bullpen for the Bearcats. It's like Steven Beard is going to get up and throw. Tristan Welch will be the hitter. Welch flied out to right his first time up. First pitch from Dillard misses down and in. Yeah, I don't know if it was the leadoff homer, but Dillard just does not look the same here in the fourth as he did the with the first three innings. Oh, just a completely different person out here on the mound now. Did a check say yes he did go. High fastball there and Welch couldn't hold back. Counts even up, one ball, one strike. A big four run frame here going so far for the Islanders. Miller trying to keep it there. 1-1 one, one offering on the way. Fly ball. This one is headed towards the gap, and it will get down for a hit. A fifth run in the inning will score, and the Islanders have tied this ball game up. Five runs now scored here in the fourth. McCodick just laced that one right where it needed to drop, bringing in another run, or Welch, rather. I mean, everything Dillard is throwing up there, the Islanders are hitting. Now six hits here in the inning. And Fluta is the ninth Islander to hit here in the inning. Fluta struck out his first time up. Offering on the way. That one is lifted into right field. Holmes comes in on the run. It's going to drop for a base hit. The throw to the plate is not in time. Welch scores, and it's a 6-5 Islander lead. Jason, give him credit. I mean, this is seemingly has came out of nowhere, and it may have started with Luke Marbach with the home run that you mentioned earlier. And here is Marbach. He'll be the 10th Islander to hit. Batting around here in the fourth. Everybody coming in on the infield now to have a chat with Dillard as Fulce just goes out there as well. So you got McKenzie, Schultz, Fulce all talking to Dillard here. And this may be just wasting some time and letting Stephen Beard get heated up. It is completely unraveled here in the fourth inning for Dillard. Started this ball game nine up, nine down. And is just unraveled here in the fourth. Six runs on seven hits for the Islanders. And here's Marbach, who got it all started with a holo, with a solo home run. I think Marbach <laughs> tried to take first. Uh, yeah, he's, he thought the ball hit him. <laughs> he started to take off. He was four or five feet down the line. And the ump said, nope, come back, young man. He even threw the bat down. One-0 -oh offering from Dillard. Swing and a miss. Count evens up. One ball, one strike. Oh, 
Marbach, the tenth guy to bat here in the inning. Started it off with a no doubt home run to left. 1-1 one, one pitch. Boy, he chased one up in his eyes. He's now down in the count one and two. That's what Dillard needs here just to strike him out, get out of this inning. One-two offering from Dillard. Little cue ball right back at him. He'll throw down to first, and that will do it. But what an inning it was for the Islanders. They score six runs on seven hits, taking advantage of one Bearcat error. And we've got a different kind of ball game now as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Islanders lead it 6-5 to five here on the Bearcat Sports Network. Courage, integrity, perseverance, commitment. Not just a job, this is a career with a purpose. TDCJ is hiring correctional officers now. No experience required, paid training, and a signing bonus of up to $5,000. Apply right now at tdcj.texas.gov or call 877-967-5489. Serve Texas with purpose. Eric Barbosa with Henson Chevy Buick GMC. During Chevy Truck Month, we're rolling back prices on our hottest trucks and SUVs. Our low prices are now even lower on all new Chevys like 2020 Silverados and GMC Sierras. Save even more with 0% for 72 months and make no payments until the summer. Plus, get a warranty for life with no deductibles and unlimited miles at no cost to you. We even deliver for free from our store to your door. We get you rolling for less at Henson Chevy. for dealer for life. Henson Chevy online at HensonChevy.com. Back here at Don Sanders Stadium as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. And, uh, Rob, I didn't think we'd say this. we got a ball game here today. 6-5, yeah. Islanders lead it. The Bearcats are going to send the top of the order to the plate, see if they can get something going here. We were talking there during the break that just completely change of pace there for Dillard after he retired nine in a row, stretching three innings to start this ball game. I mean, if you take your hand and you cover up the fourth inning, you're like, well, we're on our way to a great game. Uh, but then you lift your hand up and you just say, what happened? Well, the bright spot here is the Bearcats are already into the Islander bullpen. So Ramirez is out for his second inning of relief. Easton Lloyd will lead it off. Swings and misses on the first pitch. Lloyd walked in the first, struck out in the second. Batting here in the fourth. Curveball misses down low. Evens the count up. One ball, one strike. Lloyd will be followed by Jack Rogers and then Colton Kowser. Fastball misses high. During that half inning when everybody got into the dugout, Jay Sirianni gathered the whole team together and basically talked to them the entire time during that changeover. 2-1 pitch, curveball drops it in for a strike, evens the count up, two balls, two strikes. Two two offering on the way. Fastball. Ooh, just missed. Now it's the Islander fans who are starting to grumble a little bit. Three two offering on the way to Lloyd. Curveball. That's called strike three. You're not going to get it two times in a row. He got one borderline call. Tried to take it again, and he's out on strikes for the second time today. So with one down, Jack Rogers will hit. Rogers hit into a double play in the first, walked in the second. First pitch to Rogers, pops it up into center field. Welch underneath, still backpedaling, and makes the grab. Yeah, the sunshine's directly facing these fielders now. Welch had a lot of sun on his face. That sun really starting to stick out here now. Mm -hmm. 
So two quick outs on the Bearcats, and Colton Kowser will be the hitter. Kowser was hit by a pitch in the first, came around to score. Credited with a single in the second on a ball that hit Jack Rogers in the foot. one -oh pitch, that one misses in. Two-o -oh count here for Kowser. Hopefully he can get something going back again for Sam Houston. We're in two-out territory. Offering on the way, curveball, that went in for a strike. Looked almost like it was the same spot. This time, it's Ramirez who gets the call, and Kowser gave a little look back at David Frame, the home plate umpire. So 2 1 pitch coming to Colton Kowser. That one just a little bit in. Ramirez tried to go to the same spot, couldn't hit it. Counts 3 and 1. Two down here, bottom of the fourth inning. Pitch on the way to Colton Kowser, and that's called strike. That looked up and in. Ramirez is really settling in nicely, relieving Hayden Thomas, who gave up those five runs on seven hits after two and a third. 3-2 pitch to Kowser, swung on, chopper out to second, dive. The throw to first is not in time. Well, we give Marcotic credit out there. He had a nice dive on that, just a little bit delayed. Still had a good grab, but even more Kowser able to beat that one out. Yeah, Marcotic was playing it perfect. They had the shift on. He was playing deep on the grass and still couldn't make the play. So a two-out single for Colton Kowser and Bryce Holmes will be the hitter. Bearcats did their damage in the first with two outs. See if they can repeat that here in the fourth inning. Just about to mention, that's kind of been the afternoon for Sam Houston, doing it all in two outs. And the first inning, it was Bryce Holmes and Colton Kowser who got it started. Curveball here in for a strike. After, Coles, after Colton Kowser was hit by a pitch in the first, Holmes followed with a single. He came around to score in the first. 0-1 offering on the way. That one is fouled back out of play. So Holmes down in a two-strike hole here, 0-2. Cats looking to see if they have a response to the six runs put on the board in the top half of the frame. It's going to take a little two-out magic here for that to happen. And now Kowser is off and running. The throw goes over to first, down to second. They got him stealing, and that does it for the Bearcats. Colton Kowser thrown out for the first time this year. And the two-out hit is wiped off the base paths, and that does it for the Cats here in the fourth inning. We go to the fifth. Islanders lead it 6-5 to five here on the Bearcats Sports Network. Adams Furniture in Huntsville is looking for warehouse delivery persons for local and out-of-town deliveries. Must be clean and dependable, full-time or part-time. Good pay, paid vacation, and overtime is available. Must have a valid driver's license. Must be outgoing and personable, as this position involves being the last person the customer will see to leave a great impression. Apply in person at Adams Furniture at Highway 75 North and 10th Street in Huntsville. Adams Furniture is an equal opportunity employer. Why are people driving from all over Texas to Winker Hyundai to get a real deal? And during Hyundai Spring Upgrade sales event, save even more. Get a 2020 Hyundai Sonata SEL or a 2021 Tucson SE Your Choice, 1988. Or 0% for 72 months plus $1,000 plus no payments for 90 days. Or a 2020 Hyundai Santa Fe SEL, only 24888. Or 0% for 72 months plus $1,000 plus no payments for 90 days. Exit 87B, Wilson Road in Conroe or WeaserHyundai.com. Check out America's Best Warranty, 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain limited warranty, and the Hyundai Assurance Program today. Back here at Don Sanders Stadium, Jason Barfield alongside Rob Hip as we move to the fifth inning. Texas A&M Corpus Christi leads Sam Houston 6-5. to five. Itchy Burtz will lead it off 0 for 2 today. Burtz flied out to left and grounded back to Dillard, who is back out to work here in the fifth. See if he can rebound from that fourth inning. 
That's a good start. Curveball in for a strike. Dillard cruised through three, did not allow a base runner, and then got touched up for seven hits, six runs in the fourth inning. 0-1 offering to Burtz, and that one's fouled back off the screen. If you're Jay Sirianni after the third inning, you got to be thinking you've got a good chance with today, this being a seven-inning game of Dillard going the distance and having back-to-back -back complete games to start the series. Four games series, four games, three days, that's big to not have to tap into your bullpen. Yeah, Tyler Davis did it last night, went through all seven. 0-2 pitch, fastball. Oof. Called a ball. Dillard thought he had strike three. Foles thought it was strike three. I think everybody yeah. in the park <laughs> thought it was strike three except David Frame, the home plate umpire. You could hear all the O's and oomphs coming out of the crowd here at the Don. One-two pitch on the way from Dillard. Curveball, that one missed in. So now the count's even up. Two balls, two strikes. Burt's a 300 hitter. Just a tick over, sitting at 301 this year. He's got a 2-2 count here. Offering on the way from Dillard. Fly ball lifted out into left field. A couple steps in for Chadwick there to make the grab, and there's one down. I think Dillard really needed that. Trying to get settled back in. He finished off that fourth inning after giving up six runs as they batted around Marbach, and now it's back to two in a row here. So we'll hopefully start another streak here for Matt Dillard. Well, if he can settle in, have a quick one here in the fifth, get this into the sixth, certainly has done his job. First pitch from Dillard to Taylor in for a strike. Yeah, and Jay, you made a really good point earlier. You know, you go last night with Tyler Davis, complete game, went the distance, and you don't really want to pick into too much of your pin. And I just think that was, you know, an excellent observation because you, you want Dillard to really settle here and try to get through this one. 0-1 offering on the way, fouled back to the screen. Keep in mind, this is a seven-inning game, so while we are in the fifth, there's not a lot of time left in this one of the Bearcats trailing 6-5. to five. It's got to have a different feel. The game is definitely shortened and compact and changes the way you play it. 0-2 offering on the way, fouled back. Look out, that one heading towards Bowers Boulevard. We've seen a car get hit out there time to time. It's got to be jarring as a driver to hear that thump as you drive past a ballpark. What, does your insurance policy cover that, Jason? I'm not sure. <laughs> 0-2 pitch on the way to Taylor. Oh, another one that just missed. Another one that... Dillard wanted. Good fastball is right at 89 on that one. Those were the calls I think Dillard was getting early. 1-2 pitch on the way. That one is popped up. Foul territory. Is there going to be enough room? Rogers going back in fair territory. It's Easton Lloyd who comes over and makes the grab. Ball just kind of hung up. It looked like it was going to be farther out into foul territory. Good play by Easton Lloyd, and there's two down. Yeah, it wasn't easy for Lloyd. He kind of had to reach over his back, had the sunshine on his right cheek, and you saw him trying to figure out how to get under it. You got all those variables coming at once. You have to communicate with your guys. Was able to come down with it. Sometimes you say routine grabs. There's, sometimes there's nothing routine about some of those. First pitch from Dillard to Williams. Fly ball lifted out into right field. Holmes on the run. Kowser on the run. It's going to fall in between the two of them. Kowser leaps, makes the grab, and Williams will have to stay at second for a double. And a great play out there by Colton Kowser. He might have taken a triple away from Williams because if that ball hits the wall and Kowser or Holmes has to play it off the bounce, then I think Williams is digging into third with a triple. Yeah, you just took the words out of my mouth. I was immediately going to follow up with that. Kowser comes out, makes the leap. And as you said, that one gets away from him. That's a triple. 
In fact, the Islanders are now going to send a pinch hitter to the plate. And I don't have an eight on my roster. Do I don't you? have an eight on my roster either. So I don't know who it is. So first pitch to him is in for a strike. And our official scoring doesn't have nope. <laughs> a number for him. So, I don't know. You want to pick a name here? Well, we got Itchy Burtz. Can we come up with the second best name in baseball somehow, Jason? Scratchy? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Offering on the way from Dillard, and oof, that one missed down and in. Yeah, and I printed out the official roster from – AM Corpus before we got here as well, and it's not on that either. So 1-1 one, one pitch on the way, and that one misses down low. Count goes to 2-1. and one. Yeah, good eye here by Scratchy. <laughs> Just we have to come up with the name, Jason. Two one offering on the way. Fastball that one misses down and away. These borderline calls are not going Dillard's way. The count goes to three and one, and Dillard has to keep from getting frustrated. Just settle back in. Three one pitch coming. Fastball missed in, and it's a walk. That's Trey Jones out there. That's who that is. So Trey Jones reaching on the walk. Just a freshman out of Houston, Texas. I don't know where that one snuck in because when I printed things, that was not on there this morning. Now it's on there. Hmm. <laughs> So two on, two out for the Islanders. Brendan Ryan will be the hitter. First pitch swinging, line drive. It's going to get in for a base hit. Williams will come around to score. Everybody else will hold up. And a two-out single and another run on the board for the Islanders. It's now a 7-5 game, and I think that is going to be the end of the day for Dillard. It is. Jay Sirianni's out of the dugout, and we'll have a call to the bullpen. We'll step aside, let you know who the new pitcher is in just a moment here on the Bearcat Sports Network. It's a new year with new opportunities. Scrap metal prices are the highest in years, and TJ Burdett has money for yours. For over 45 years, TJ Burdett and Sons Recycling has served Walker County with the highest prices and straight deals. Right now, get a multi-year high, $7 per 100 pounds of scrap steel and $9 per 100 pounds of short iron. Bring your scrap and get some scratch. The most in years, TJ Burdett and Sons, exit 118 North, I-45, just past the Shell truck stop. Visit TJ Burdett and Sons on Facebook for more info. Eric Barbosa for Henson CDGR, and we're rolling back prices on America's best-selling vehicles. During Ram Truck Month and the Jeep Celebration event, our low truck and SUV prices are now even lower. Save more with 0% for 84 months and make no payments until the summer. Plus, get a warranty for life with no deductibles and unlimited miles at no cost to you. We even deliver for free from our store to your door. We get you rolling for less at Henson CDJR. Your dealer for life. CDJR.com. Oh, Jason, we got a little clarification there. That eight looked like a three, so it is Trey Jones earlier. That is a <laughs> terrible number. That I'm still looking at it. It still looks like an eight. Yeah. He gets two steps away from home plate. That is an eight every day. You know what it is, too? It's I think there's an illusion with the netting that causes it to look like an eight. When but, he's close, it looks like a three. But comparing it to number 18 for the Islanders. Looks different. Marcotic, who's out on 
the, who's on, out on the on-deck circle. Yeah, she can see the difference. But, yeah, so that is Trey Jones over there. And, by the way, new pitcher for the Bearcats, Garrett Egley. Six foot four, 205 pound junior out of San Antonio. Played at Smithson Valley High School. Came to the Bearcats from Midland College. Second baseman number 18, Leo Marcus. He's worked four and two thirds innings this year, allowed six hits, seven runs, all of them earned. So we'll face Marcotic here. A run already in for the Islanders here in the fifth inning. They lead it seven to five. Marcotic with runners at the corners. First pitch in for a strike. Yeah, it's a tough break for Dillard. He started out retiring nine in a row, finished up four and two thirds inning, seven runs on nine hits. All seven of those runs earned. He struck out five, allowed one home run, a 6.48 ERA. Now throw over to first. Chase Ryan back to the bag. Taking his time here. Another throw over to first. One run already in here in the inning for the Islanders. They've got runners at the corners and two outs. Bearcat starter Matt Dillard has now been chased. He started this inning off with two outs. That pitch is in the dirt, and they're going to try to get home on it. False dives, and safe is the call at the plate. The ball did not get very far away from False. But heads up base running there from Trey Jones, and now Jay Sirianni is going to come out and ask. And Fulce just made a dive back to the plate. But you got to give credit there to Trey Jones yeah. as he quickly took off as soon as the ball skipped away from Fulce. Sirianni out to talk about it, but it looked like from our angle here that Jones got that hand in ahead of the tag. Brian over there at second after the wild pitch. So it's now an 8-5 Islander lead. Now time is asked for from Marcotic. I guess, Jason, the Islanders just trying to duplicate what Sam Houston did in the first. All of this here in the fifth has happened in two-out territory. Yeah, great start to the inning for Dillard. Two quick outs. 1-1 one, one pitch on the way, and that one is in for a strike. It's a nice little off-speed clip in the corner there on the outside. Marconic, one for two today. Two RBI double in the fourth inning. Part of that six-run inning for the Islanders. Now eight runs on nine hits. One two pitch on the way. Fly ball lifted out into right field. It's gonna tail and it will just fall foul. So the counter remain one and two. We're in the top of the fifth inning. First of two here today. Cats and Islanders playing a double dip. The Southland Conference is playing four-game weekend series this season. 40 games played in league play. One-two offering on the way. Swing and a miss. Strikeout for the Bearcats. 
And we'll go to the bottom of the fifth after the Islanders put two more runs on the board. It is now an 8-5 Corpus lead here on the Bearcat Sports Network. It's a new year with new opportunities. Scrap metal prices are the highest in years, and TJ Burnett has money for yours. For over 45 years, TJ Burnett and Sons Recycling has served Walker County with the highest prices and straight deals. Right now, get a multi-year high, $7 per 100 pounds of scrap steel and $9 per 100 pounds of short iron. Bring your scrap and get some scratch. The most in years, TJ Burnett and Sons, exit 118 North I-45, just past the Shell truck stop. Visit TJ Burnett and Sons on Facebook for more info. This is Tim Rushing with Charlie's Used Cars. As most of you have seen or know, we are being affected by the I-45 freeway expansion. I assure you we are open and ready to serve you with your next vehicle purchase. We have driveway access off the I-45 feeder road as well as easy access off of Normal Park Drive. Charlie's Used Cars has been serving the area for 48 years and offers quality pre-owned vehicles and superior customer service. I encourage you to stop by and see us at 230 I-45 South here in Huntsville or visit us online at charliesusedcars.com. Here at, back here at Don Sanders Stadium, Jason Barfield here alongside Rob Hip as we move to the bottom of the fifth inning. And Cats have some work to do on the offensive end. The Islanders have scored eight unanswered here and lead it eight to five. As it'll be four, five, six in the Bearcat order. Bryce Holmes will lead it off. Holmes singled and scored back in the first inning. First pitch swinging here, pops it up, back behind first. Marcotic comes over, makes the grab. And one pitch, one out here in the fifth. It's now five in a row, retired by Jaime Ramirez. Trent Touche will be the hitter. He's reached twice, scored twice. Singleton drove in a run in the first, walked and scored a run in the third. First pitch misses outside. Touche will be followed by Clayton Chadwick. one -oh offering in there for a strike. Touche just back to clarify things, ask a little question about the pitch. So 1-1 one, one pitch on the way. That one bounces in. Bearcats started off big here. Four runs in the first inning. Another one in the third to take a 5-0 lead as that fastball is in for a strike. But the Islanders have scored eight unanswered. They lead it eight to five. Now time is called for by Touche. Touche is really settled in here for the Bearcats, hitting 429 now on the year. Pitch on the way, that one lines in, that'll be a base hit. Brendan Ryan will cut it off before it makes it down into the corner, so it's a one-out single for Trent Touche. He just continues to hit the ball. That is now 10 hits and 22 at-bats this year for Touche. Yeah, Touche giving some life here to Sam Houston on base all three times here this afternoon. Clayton Chadwick will be the hitter. First pitch to Chadwick, misses inside. Chadwick with a couple of base knocks today, an RBI single in the first, RBI single in the third. one -oh offering on the way, and that one's going to skip away, and Touche is going to take an extra base. Second time Touche has taken second on a wild pitch today. Jason, didn't you say before the game that you know, sometimes on these double headers, it's nice for it to go to eight. Maybe you spoke some truth into this. I'd rather not. <laughs> but just eight. Just eight. 1-1 <laughs> one, one pitch on the way to Chadwick as that one is in for a strike. Chadwick now down in the count one and two. 
There's one down here. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning. Of a scheduled seven inning game. One two pitch coming, and that one is fouled off. So counter remain one and two to Chadwick. Now he'll ask for time. Another one two pitch, swing and a miss. Chadwick down on strikes. There's now two down here in the inning for the Bearcats. So Mason Schultz will be the hitter. Schultz tripled back in the first inning, brought home two runs, hit it right off the top of the wall. Pitch on the way, swing and a miss. Now besides that one little blip on Trent Touche, as Jaime Ramirez has really settled in here. Ramirez with a look back at second, 0-1 pitch. Schultz sends a fly ball into center field. Welch underneath it, makes the grab, and that does it for the Bearcats. They leave one stranded, and we will go to the sixth. Islanders lead it 8-5 to five here on the Bearcats Sports Network. If you've had trouble with the law and a cell door is between you and freedom, call Mama Lemon at Lone Star Bell Bonds. You know Mama can help. Mama sure helped me when I needed it. Thanks, Mama Lemon. Don't stay behind bars. Mama Lemon at Lone Star Bell Bonds is ready to help. Visit LoneStarBellHuntsville.com. That's LoneStarBellHuntsville.com. March brings warmer weather and even hotter deals right here at Wiesner and Huntsville, just in time for the county fairs and rodeos. We've got great deals on all of our tracks, equinoxes, blazers, and traverses. You can get up to $4,750 in purchase allowance. We even have half tons, three-quarter tons, and the one-ton heavy-duty Silverados available with up to $4,250 in purchase allowance. So hurry into Wiesner and Huntsville for the best selection or shop us online at WiesnerHuntsville.com. Chevy, find new roads. Welcome back, friends. Rob Hip here at the dawn. Sam Houston baseball. So we'll start things back here in the top of the sixth inning. Garrett Egley remains on the mound as he came in for Matt Dillard, who went through four and two-thirds, allowing seven runs on nine hits. Those seven runs were earned. Five strikeouts, a home run, a 6.48 ERA. Egley here just trying to keep things rolling and get his team back into this game again. Sam Houston trailing eight to five as we're here in the top of the sixth. And Starting things leading off in the top of the sixth inning is Tristan Welch for the Islanders. Welch so far today, one for two. Had one run, also brought in one. He was actually an RBI single back in the fourth and the third. He popped one up over to right. So again, Tristan Welch, the junior. We averaging 220 this season, but so far today, 500. And now his third time at the plate. Again, we are 8-5 to five as Egley going to try some magic here. The right-handed delivery on the way. And the first pitch is a strike on an 87-mile-an-hour fastball across the corner. The early count here, 0-1 on Tristan Welch. Getting a lot of friends joining us on our social media feeds. If you've got some comments, let us know you're out there. We'd love to hear from you. Let us know who you're cheering on. We'll give you a shout out as well. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Looks similar to the last one, but this time a little too low to the outside corner to even the count at one ball and one strike. No outs. Islanders with the three-run advantage again. Eight to five here in the top of the sixth. Coach Brent Grablachoff joining us. Coach Brent. 
Talk about him here in a minute. Here's a 1-1 one, one and an off speed as that one drops in for a strike one and two. Known Coach Brent for many years. He runs a organization that helps high school kickers develop. A lot of those graduates are from his program going on to play at the next level, getting college offers. So appreciate you, Coach Brent. Thanks for joining us. Here's the one-two pitch on the way. This one, did it stay fair? No, it went foul. It bounced on the line near that third base bag. And the battle starting here for the center fielder, Tristan Welch. Edward still joining us from across the pond, I believe, Edward. Let me know. I don't think you're back here yet. I think you're still across the pond in Scotland, my friend. Saying, have a great game. Eat them up, cats. And my beautiful mother, Shirley Hip, and my grandmother joining us from north of Austin in Georgetown, Texas. Also, Pete Zinner on the In the Booth stream as well. Thank you, Pete. One, two, no outs, nobody on for the Islanders. Leading eight to five here in the top of the six. The next pitch, this one swung around and bounces foul and took a hard hit there as that one, boy, took a bounce as Welch swung around on it. That ball came back up, may have got a little bit of him in the chest there as he's going to step out and take some time. The home plate umpire, David Frame, went over to check on him just to make sure he's okay. He is. He's just going to take some extended time here and catch his breath. You swing around hard like that and the ball bounces up on your chest, you better believe it's going to take a little bit out of you. And David Frame, the home plate umpire. First base is Myron Miller. Jerry Johnson over at third. There is no second base umpire here in this game. Next pitch to the corner outside to even the count at two balls and two strikes. Egley here trying to find something here for his team. Two and two, no outs, trailing eight to five. Nobody on. Egley's next pitch on the way. This one bounces in the dirt. Brings us to a full count at three and two. It's the first time that Egley's been at a three and two. My beautiful fiance, Bridget Brennan, back in Georgetown joining us. Love you, sweetheart. In fact, after this doubleheader, I'll be making my way back to Georgetown. I live here in Huntsville, but making my way back to Georgetown to be with her. Igloo's payoff pitch on the way. This one is laced right over to center, and he will easily reach over to first. Boy, a 3-2 single there for Welch. That'll take us to the bottom of the order. It is Cole Fluta. 82 degrees now, a little muggy outside. The wind is picking up around 11 miles an hour out of the south. Hasn't really been too much of a factor here in this game. We've seen a few glimpses of sunshine on the field, but now things have gotten pretty cloudy again here in the overclass skies. Bottom of the order we are again, Cole Fluta. Places a bunt here. This one will drop, and is he in time over to first? No, he is out. So good field work there by the Cats for the first out. Fluta almost had him and was not able to beat that one out. A good throw was made over to first. Rogers pulling it in, and we are one away. But the runner does advance. Welch over to second, so Fluta did what he had to do. That's the purpose of the bunt, of course. Take us to the top of the order, the first baseman, Luke Marbach. Marbach here in this game. Had that home run that started the rally in the fourth where the Islanders put up six marks in the top of that inning. They put up two more in the fifth. First pitch on the way to the outside. Marbach 1-0 early count. He looks over to second. Now the delivery. Too high upstairs. That one right at the neckline. 2-0 count. Right, 
Luke Marbach trying to pick things back up. He was grounded one out back in the fourth for the third out. He had two at-bats in that inning as the Islanders batted around. The next pitch drops it on the off-speed for a strike. Beautiful pitch there by Garrett Egley. Two one, one away. Runner in scoring position at second is Tristan Welch. You're looking over his shoulder. Now the kick up with the left leg, the right-handed delivery, too far to the outside on the curve. And Marbach ahead here, three and one, one away. Of course, right after this one, there'll be a momentary break, and then we'll have the second game of this doubleheader. Sam Houston commanding run rule victory 13-2 last night. They put up four in the first, two in the second, five in the fourth, and then a single mark in the fifth and the sixth. But it's been a different story here in this one. Things started out great for the Bearcats. Matt Dillard was a quick nine in a row retired, but the fourth is what got him and has really done the work here to this team. Trailing now eight to five. We're going to have a little discussion at the mound as the next pitch to Marbach was a walk. So he'll reach on a walk. Now runners on one and two. And I mentioned coming into this broadcast, this Islanders team, they took Texas Tech down to the wire in that Shriners for Children's Hospital College Classic at Minute Maid Park just a couple of weeks ago. They took Texas Tech to nine innings, two outs. They had an opportunity to win that one, but weren't able to come away with the victory. So it's a very tough and capable Islander team Conversation continues. Your intensive play is not pitching for Sam Houston. A left handed sophomore out of the Williams. And we got a new pitcher out there, Stephen Beard. So that will do it for Garrett Egley. We'll step aside and take a break. We got a new pitcher on the mound again. It is Stephen Beard. We'll have his information and more in 30 seconds. Stay with us on the Bearcat Sports Network. Does learning a language feel like this? No habla espanol. Hablo. It's hablo? Yes. It's hablo. <laughs> when you learn a language, you want to actually use it. Babbel is designed with that goal in mind. Since my husband is from Guatemala, I'll apply what I've learned in Babbel to our real life situations. The app is so easy to use and it's so practical. It helps you learn things that you will actually need. Babbel, language for life. Celebrating 10 million subscriptions sold. Now try Babbel for free at babbel.com. That's babbel.com. B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Welcome back, friends. Rob Hip live from the Don here in Huntsville, Texas. 8-5 to a and Corpus leading here in the top of the six. Two runners on. And unfortunately for Sam Houston, they're going to have to go through another pitcher here. Now third of this afternoon is Stephen Beard. Stephen Beard, a left-handed pitcher. This young man... Has pitched six and two-thirds innings this season. 0-1 is record, allowing five runs on seven hits. Three of those runs were earned. He struck out four, allowed one to double. Also one home run on the season. Again, a 4.05 ERA here for Steven Beard. And he will toss to Itchy Burtz. Burtz 0 for 3 this afternoon, second in the order. As Burtz will step in, and Stephen Beard getting his first look of this afternoon. On the mound, the lefty. He'll kick up his right leg. Here's the left-handed pitch too close to the inside. One ball, no strikes to start things here. Itchy Burtz. Talk a little bit more about Stephen Beard out of the Woodlands, Texas. Jason and I have talked so much kind of about that baseball triangle, if you will, in that area. Just to our south, a lot of good baseball players coming from that area. Next pitch, this one popped foul way over behind us here in the box. You may have heard it hit the top up there. And the count even at one and one, aces across the board. Again, runners on one and two. The Islanders leading eight to five here in the top of the sixth. This first of the double headers will go to seven innings or scheduled for seven innings. Here's the 1-1 pitch. This one swung on late, goes foul off the third baseline, one and two. 
Stephen Beard, a six foot, 190 pound sophomore. As I mentioned earlier, out of the Woodlands. Four appearances at the Bearcat bullpen this season. Struck out four without a walk in six and a thirds. Of course, last year, that difficult season. Shortened because of COVID. Worked out of a situation in the first appearance of the year in a series finale versus St. Mary's. This one hit over to right, going the distance. And this one is over the back of the wall and out of here. A three-run homer for Itchy Burtz after he goes 0 for 3. And that one well past the 375. Well, not well past. It bounced off the top of the wall and dropped over. A three-run homer. It is 11 to 5. Bring us the third in the order, the catcher, Justin Taylor, as the bases are now cleared. Taylor lines this one over to left, and that's another base hit for Justin Taylor, his second of the afternoon. And the hot bats just continuing here for AM Corpus. It all started back in the fourth. They have not let up since that inning, scoring six in the fourth, two in the fifth, and now three here in the top of the sixth. It's all happening here in this inning with just one at one away. Cleaning up the left fielder, Mike Williams. First pitch on the way, he scored two runs in this one. This one grounded over to second. The throw going for the double play. Not in time though, but the runner is out over at second is Taylor. Williams over to first. So at least that'll clear one out of scoring position. Jones. Brings up the designated hitter, number three, Trey Jones. He scored a run back in the fifth, reached on a walk. Two outs we are. Islanders leading now 11-5 here in the top of the sixth. Beard's delivery actually is looking to pick off over at first. That base runner is safe, Mike Williams, who reached on a single just moments ago. Another pick attempt back at first, and again, safe. So Beard just trying to keep an eye over there at the first base bag. Williams reaching moments ago on the fielder's choice. Taylor was out at second. Here's the next delivery. This one drops in too low for a ball 1-0 count. But a few Islander fans making their way here to the Don. This one chopped foul up the first base side as it'll bounce into the Islander dugout. Even count, one ball, one strike, two away here in the top of the sixth. Here's the next pitch. This one chopped over to first, an unassisted tag, and that will do it. But not before some more damage done. Third consecutive inning as the Islanders picking up three runs in this inning on three hits, no errors, and one left on. We're through five and a half, bottom of the six coming up. Sam Houston trying to find some redemption. We'll take a moment. We'll be back in a minute on the Bearcat Sports Network. Oak Creek Homes, may I help you? Hi, I would like to meet the banker. Uh, during our Meet the Banker event this weekend? Yes, tell me about him, the banker. Well, he's... Cute? A senior loan officer with... Lots of money? Years of experience, but he does have hundreds of thousands of dollars. He sounds perfect. Dollars to lend. Oh, who does he lend his money to? Just about anyone who wants to buy a new Oak Creek home. First time home buyers, home buyers interested in land home packages. He even has special financing for folks with credit scores as low as 575. Oh, that's so sweet. And he set a goal of making 40 new home loans this weekend. He's so generous. And this weekend, he's offering special low interest rates on all loans. I love him. Oak Creek Home. 
where I-45 South is having their Meet the Banker event this weekend. Call 936-755-4171 or go online to oakcreekhuntsville.com. Oak Creek Homes. Back at it, friends, here in the bottom of the six as the sky's getting a little bit darker here. As Sam Houston trailing at the dawn, 11 to five, hosting A&M Corpus. The Islanders putting up six in the fourth, two in the fifth, and three in the sixth. Sam Houston scoring four runs in the bottom of the first, and then only one back in the third. That is all they've wrote so far. West Foles gonna try to change that thing here for Sam Houston, eighth in the order. As Foles at bat now here, 0 for 1 today. And the first pitch got the corner for a strike here on West Foles, 0 and 1. Here's the next delivery. This one dropped too low. Evens the count at one ball and one strike. Saw Cody McLaren join us in the booth a little bit earlier. Here's the 1-1. One, one. This one to the outside, two balls and a strike. Cody playing for the local high school team here in Huntsville, the Hornets, on their baseball team. Appreciate you, Cody. Two and one the count, no outs, nobody on. Sam Houston trying to find some life here, and a swing and a miss. A little 75 mile an hour off speed to even the count at two and two. Infield standing in their positions just at the back of the dirt. The next pitch to the outside to bring it to a full count at three and two. Ramirez remains on the mound where he has been successful, only allowing one hit. He hasn't allowed any runs coming in, relieving Hayden Thomas. Here's the payoff pitch, the 3-2, two, too high, and West Foles will reach on a payoff walk. And it's a leadoff walk for West Foles. That'll take us to the bottom of the order, Anthony McKenzie, so maybe this is a little bit of the life that the Bearcats need here in this six. Remember, we're only going scheduled seven innings in this first of the doubleheader. So Anthony McKenzie, the shortstop back out there. McKenzie out of Houston, Texas. Second Baptist High School, first pitch. It's called a strike, 0-1. Oh Got the corner there, nice little painting for Jaime Martinez. Here's the next pitch from the left hand to the right-handed batter. This one also clipping the corner. An 89 mile an hour fastball. No balls, two strikes, no outs. Base runner on one after West Foles reached on the walk just moments ago. His team trailing 11 to five. Bearcats trying to get back into this one. Ramirez, his next delivery. This time too far to the outside. One ball and two strikes. Mentioned earlier is there wasn't much wind at the very beginning, but that wind, you can start to hear it a little bit on our crowd mic that's through the tube here, gusting up to around 15 or so out of the south. Here's the one-two pitch. This one swung on late foul as it goes over to the berm, drops inside the seating area. Patrons in the SRO section down the first base line are expected to police themselves and properly social distance at all times. Here's the one-two pitch from the left hand. Drops in low for a ball. Two and two to even the count up on Anthony McKenzie. McKenzie out, part of that double play back in the third. Here's the next pitch. Close inside, another 3-2 coming up here on the second batsman in a row for Jaime Ramirez. Three balls, two strikes, no outs, base runner on first. Sam Houston trailing 11 to five. Here's the payoff on its way. And it's another walk on a 3-2 pitch. This time it's Anthony McKenzie. That will force West Foles over to second. There's gonna be a discussion at the mound here. As Jaime Ramirez, I mentioned earlier, has pitched pretty well after coming in, relieving Hayden Thomas after two and a thirds inning. Ramirez coming in 
in the third. He'll have a discussion here as everyone will come in and talk this one over. Got a pinch hitter coming in here. I believe it's going to be Brandon Pruitt. He is the pinch hitter. Now pinch hitting for San Houston. A sophomore out of Fort Bend, Travis. Number four, Brandon Pruitt. So Brandon Pruitt now pinch hitting for Easton Lloyd as we go back to the top of the order. Brandon Pruitt, a sophomore transfer out of Grayson College. Fort Bend Travis High School, 5 foot 10, 165 pound sophomore. First pitch on the way to Pruitt. Across the belt line for a strike, 0-1. It's a good 88 mile an hour fastball. This young man made his Bearcat debut at Southeastern Louisiana back on March the 14th. He reached the base twice with a base hit and a walk in that series. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Across the corner, got him for a strike, 0-2. Took a red shirt back in 2019 when he played at Grayson Community College. In 2018, he played in 36 games as a true freshman, hit 273, two homers. He was also named a 2016 Under Armour Underclassman All-American at Fort Bend Travis High School, four-year letterman in three-time All-District choice. Here's the next one. This one to the outside. Good eye right there, one and two. So again, one ball, two strikes, runners on one and two. Now in scoring position, West Fulce, no outs. Bearcats looking for something here, trailing 11 to five in the bottom of the six. Here's the next pitch to the outside to even the count at two and two. Sam Houston doing a lot of their damage early on when they were leading this contest back in the first. That damage got wiped out with those six runs back in the fourth. It has been 11 unanswered runs by the Islanders. And a strikeout here for the first out on Brandon Pruitt. Pruitt was swinging on that one. Bring us to second in the order, the first baseman, Jack Rogers. He was out for the first out, part of the double play back in the first. Reached on a walk in the second, and then popped one up over to center for the second out back in the fourth. Here's the delivery to the left-handed batter. Swung on, chopped foul as it goes into the backstop. The early count here, 0-1, one away. Again, friends, if you're out there, would love to hear from you on our social media platforms. You can, t you can uh, send us a comment if you're in the booth with us. Had a few comments asking... If folks can see the field, we don't have the video rights. This is just a game that is simulcast on our local FM station, 101.7 KSAM, but we also do an in the booth on social media. Here's the pitch. This one laced out to short as it will roll, and that's a base hit for Jack Rogers, a one-out single. Bearcats needing life. Jack Rogers may have given them something here in the bottom of the sixth. And the bases are now loaded. It's not enough to bring in a run, but the bases are loaded. So that'll force Fulce over to the third. McKenzie at second. And Colton Kowser with an opportunity here for the Bearcats. Trailing 11 to 5. One out we are here in the... Bottom of the sixth. This one is dropped over to left. That will bring in a run. Maybe two. We'll see. Nope. Holds up at two, but that run coming in. It's an RBI single for Colton Kowser. This may be a little bit of a rally to get started here for the Bearcats. Is Kowser with the RBI single. He'll bring in West False. Cook the stakes, baby. Bring up fourth in the order, Bryce Holmes, who is one for three this afternoon. Had a single, came around and scored the second run back in the first. Here's the next delivery, swung on and missed, 0-1. So finally, after 11 unanswered runs, Sam Houston able to put a single mark on the board here in the bottom of the sixth. 
Only one out we are. Early count here again, 0-1 on Bryce Holmes. As Ramirez will step back just for a moment. Has that left foot on the left of the rubber. Right foot in front of him. Kicks it up. Here's the delivery. Swung on a miss here. Maybe a little bit of a foul tip. And they count at 0-2. Appreciate Larry Little joining us, listening to Trent Touche and the rest of the Bearcats from his hometown, Shreveport, Louisiana. Again, thanks for joining us, our In the Booth feed. 0-2, current count here, Bryce Holmes. A hit here would surely score. Boy, and just in the nick of time, getting back onto the bag was Colton Kowser. He had a little bit of a collision there with Luke Marbach. Count remains 0-2, one away, 11-6. Islanders with a five-run advantage. They had scored 11 unanswered before Sam Houston scoring an RBI single moments ago, brought in by Colton Kowser. It brought in false. Here's the pitch on the way. This one fouled into the back of the net behind the backstop. Good little battle starting here for Bryce Holmes. Nice at bat. Count remains 0-2. When it is really starting to get a lot darker out there as things are switching from overcast to now mostly cloudy and some dark clouds starting to make their way and the lights are on here at the dawn. Flag starting to whip up as well. The 0-2 to the outside corner for a ball. One ball and two strikes. Bases remain loaded. Bryce Holmes, a left-handed batter. Here's the pitch. Too high upstairs. Brings us to an even count at two and two. So this nice bat continues here for Bryce Holmes. Kowser over at first, Rogers at second, McKenzie at third. Here's the 2-2 pitch. What great eye right there by Bryce Holmes. That one just below the corner to bring it to a full count at three and two. It is the third time we've seen a 3-2 here in this inning. It started on the first two batsmen and they were both walked or both reached on a walk. Can we make it the third time? The charm on its way? No, we cannot. As Bryce Holmes looked at that one for the second out. Got to take advantage of the opportunity here with three on. We move down to Trent Touche. Just heard from Larry Little moments ago, who's cheering on Trent. Fifth in the order. Touche has been on base every time so far tonight. Three times. He had that RBI single back in the first, came around and scored, advanced a second on a wild pitch, reached on a walk in the third, stole a second, reached a third on an error, and then had a hit and was left stranded on a wild pitch back in the fifth That's second. First pitch to the outside, a ball on Trent Touche, the count 1-0. Trent Touche trying to bring him in here. On its way, this one over to short. Should be a routine play, and it is. Tough break for the Cats. As they're not able to do anything with the three left on, they did manage to pick up one run. We'll step aside and take a break as we move to the top of the final frame. Stay with us, friends. This is the Bearcats Sports Network. Now's the time to get a great deal on select Kubota subcompact and compact tractors. Our reliable number one selling tractors are designed for easy operation and feature all the performance match detachments needed to tackle any job. Right now, get zero down and 0% APR for 60 months, plus save up to $1,000. Now through March 31st, see us or go to KubotaUSA.com for full disclaimer. Stop into Huntsville Truck and Tractor today, conveniently located at 2124 Highway 30 East in Huntsville, or call us at 936-291-8103.
Mark brings warmer weather and even hotter deals right here at Wiesner in Huntsville, just in time for the county fairs and rodeos. We've got great deals on all of our tracks, equinoxes, blazers, and traverses. You can get up to $4,750 in purchase allowance. We even have half tons, three-quarter tons, and the one-ton heavy-duty Silverados available with up to $4,250 in purchase allowance. So hurry into Wiesner in Huntsville for the best selection or shop us online at WiesnerHuntsville.com. Chevy, find new roads. All right, friends, welcome back. Rob Hip here as we climb to the top of the seventh inning. Sam Houston trailing 11-6, picking up one run in the sixth. They left a couple on, though, and it's a tough break there for Sam Houston. We'll start things back here for the Islanders. And leading off is the right fielder, Brendan Ryan. Ryan two for three so far here this afternoon. Getting close to 5.30. we got one more game coming up after this one, part of the doubleheader. First pitch to the outside. Actually, it's going to clip the corner. Nice painting there for the strike, 0-1. Oh, nice. Next delivery. This one drops over to left center. Just found its way, dropped right in front. No opportunity for a defensive play to be made. Kowser got behind it after the bounce. And it's a leadoff single here on a one strike for Brendan Ryan. Second baseman number 18, Leo Marconic. Brings up the second baseman, seventh in the order, Leo Marcotic. Marcotic. One for two, grounds this one. Looking for the double play, the throw over to first, and it's not there. The runner is out over at second, and that one just got out of the reach over at first. So it will eliminate Ryan from being in scoring position, and we are one away. Center fielder number 15, Tristan Welch. Brandon Pruitt playing over at second base for Easton Lloyd, who came into pinch hit. Let's bring up Tristan Welch. Two for three so far today. Pitch dropped in. Beautiful strike there on an off speed at 75 miles an hour. 0-1 the count. One away here in the top of the seventh. The final scheduled frame in this one is the Islanders leading 11 to six. Thanks for staying with us. Here's the Nets pitch. This one, boy, a beauty over to the left corner. And runners will advance over to third, and that is a double for Tristan Welch. He continues his domination now, three hits in a row in his second double of this afternoon. That will put Brendan Ryan over at third. And that's a one-out double for Tristan Welch. Take us down to the bottom of the order, Cole Fluta. Cole Fluta in this ball game is one for three this afternoon. I actually call it one for two. Had an RBI single in this game earlier. Here's the first pitch to him with runners on two and three. Too far to the outside, one ball, no strikes. Justin Kring joining us, saying eat them up, Cats. Appreciate you, Justin. Ran into you yesterday in Trinity, Texas, on my way to White House to call a high school game. Next pitch, too far to the outside, two and zero oh count, one away. This is the third pitcher of the evening, Stephen Beard, who came in to relieve Garrett Egley earlier back in the seventh. Here's the next pitch on the 2-0. -oh, this one over to Short, making the grab. No, he dropped it. We'll see here, because I believe he dropped it. Brandon... It was McKenzie, I believe. It may have been Brandon Pruitt that came out there trying to make that grab. It was over to short, but Pruitt came running at it. And, my goodness, it is 
a drop. And so now the bases are loaded for the Islanders. We're going to have another discussion at the mound here. A little bit of a discussion as we will have a pitching change. So Sam Houston here, you didn't want to go through it. You were hoping that Matt Dillard could have went the distance. He was not able to after four and two thirds. And now we'll see the fourth pitcher of this evening come in for the Cats. We'll talk about that when we come back in one minute on the Bearcats Sports Network. It's a new year with new opportunities. Scrap metal prices are the highest in years, and TJ Burdett has money for yours. For over 45 years, TJ Burdett and Sons Recycling has served Walker County with the highest prices and straight deals. Right now, get a multi-year high, $7 per 100 pounds of scrap steel and $9 per 100 pounds of short iron. Bring your scrap and get some scratch. The most in years, TJ Burdett and Sons, exit 118 North, I-45, just past the Shell truck stop. Visit TJ Burdett and Sons on Facebook for more information. Bell. Eric Barbosa with Henson Chevy Buick GMC. During Chevy Truck Month, we're rolling back prices on our hottest trucks and SUVs. Our low prices are now even lower on all new Chevys like 2020 Silverados and GMC Sierras. Save even more with 0% for 72 months and make no payments until the summer. Plus, get a warranty for life with no deductibles and unlimited miles at no cost to you. We even deliver for free from our store to your door. We get you rolling for less at Henson Chevy. We're dealer for life. Henson Chevy online at HensonChevy.com. Back at it here, friends from the Don. Rob Hip, thanks for joining us. Now on the mound is Alex Havlicek getting his warm up pitches. We'll talk more about Havlicek here in a minute. So Garrett Eagley was the second pitcher. He only went for two-thirds of an inning, allowing two runs on one hit. Both of those runs were earned. He walked one, struck out one, and one wild pitch as well. He only pitched 19. Beard goes for just an inning. One run on four hits. That run was earned. Allowed one to double and also allowed that home run. He only pitched 17. And now Alex Havlicek takes the mound for Sam Houston, just trying to stop some damage here and get out of this ball game and head into the second one. Alex Havlicek, right-handed pitcher, 6'5", 220 sophomore out of Oakland, New Jersey, made his way here through Indian Hills High School, Howard College, and Virginia Tech. And he'll throw this one to start things to Luke Marbach. First baseman, number two, Luke Marbach. It's the first baseman, Luke Marbach. Marbuck has scored a couple of runs here in this game tonight. The first pitch to the outside from Havlicek. In the early count here, 1-0 on Luke Marbach. Again, just one out. Bases remain loaded here for the Islanders. They have scored in the previous three innings. Six in the fourth, two in the fifth, three in the sixth. Here's the second pitch. This one popped up over to right. They're going to have to communicate about this one. And letting up, and Holmes able to come down and make the grab. Will not give an opportunity there for any runners to come in and score. So Bryce Holmes communicating with Brandon Pruitt out there at second. Pruitt, by the way, making an error a while ago that allowed Fluter to reach over to first. Third baseman, number one. So we are now two away. Brings up Itchy Burtz, the third baseman. Had that home run back in the six. That brought in three. Two away we are. 11 to five, the lead for the Islanders as the sun's starting to come back out a little bit. Pitch too high to the outside. One ball, no strikes, two away here on Burtz. Bases remain loaded. The Islanders, Fluta at first, Welch at second, Markotic over at third. Havlicek shrugs his shoulders, now the right-handed delivery. Boy, brought some heat on that. It was too low, though. 91 miles an hour out of the fast hand of Havlicek. Two balls, no strikes on Itchy Burtz. Here's the 2-0 with the sunshine in his face as it came back out. This time swung around for a strike to make it 2-1. and one. Right 
Again, if you're watching us on social media, in the booth, on Facebook or YouTube, feel free to say hello to us. Let us know who you're cheering on. We'll give you a shout-out. Son is back out there on the left cheek of Havlicek. Here's the delivery. Across the plate for a strike on a 93-mile-an-hour fastball to put twos across the board. If Burtz is able to get on base, Justin Taylor on deck, eagerly awaiting. 11 to 6. Islanders leading. Here's the next pitch. I call those an inchworm pitch. It was low near the belt line, causes the batsman to kind of have to wiggle his way out of the way, bring it to a full count at 3 and 2. It's an Islander team, 14 of 34. Hitting over 41% here in this ball game. Here's Havlicek on the payoff pitch. This one to the outside, and that walk will force a run. Brennan Ryan will come in to score the seventh, or beg your pardon, the twelfth run of this ball game. It's AM Corpus now stretches it to a 12 to 6 advantage here in the top of the seventh. Catcher number 21, Justin Taylor. Brings up third in the order of the catcher. Number 21, Justin Taylor. Two hits in this game. Came around and scored in the fourth on his single. Here's the first pitch to the right-handed batter. That one clips the corner for a strike, 0-1. Oh Taylor now with his fifth plate appearance of this ball game. Here's the 0-1 with bases loaded. Good job by West Fulce to get behind this one. Ball kind of got low in the dirt and Fulce was able to get behind it. One ball, one strike. Bases remain loaded here for the Islanders, leading 12-6 at bat in the top of the seventh. Shade starting to come back over the field now as clouds go over the sun. Next pitch drops in for a strike one and two. Again, friends, stay with us as we'll have a short break in between this game and the next game. This is game one of the doubleheader. Of course, Sam Houston, for those of you just joining us, they opened up this four-game series last night in a 13-2 run rule ball game. It's been a different story here, though, in this one. This one hit over to center. Making the grab in the third out is Colton Kowser. So one run on two hits, one error, and two left on. The Islanders scoring yet again, this time one run, as I mentioned, here in the top of the seventh. Final opportunity coming up for Sam Houston, trailing 12 to six. As we go to the bottom of the seventh, we'll be back in a minute, right here on the Bearcat Sports Network. They don't build cars like they used to, and they don't repair them like they used to either. Today's vehicles contain advanced lightweight materials and safety features like crumple zones and sensors that help protect your family. Repairing them properly after a collision requires up-to-date training. Amaya's Collision Center at 686 I-45 has it. They're among only 15% of shops to meet the industry's highest training standards as a gold-class business. When you pick a collision repair shop, make the smart choice for your family's safety. Choose gold-class trained repair professionals. Choose Amaya's Collision Center, 686 I-45. Why are people driving from all over Texas to Weaver Hyundai to get a real deal? And during Hyundai Spring Upgrade sales event, save even more. Get a 2020 Hyundai Sonata SEL or a 2021 Tucson SE Your Choice, $19,888. Or 0% for 72 months plus $1,000 plus no payments for 90 days. Or a 2020 Hyundai Santa Fe SEL, only $24,888. Or 0% for 72 months plus $1,000 plus no payments for 90 days. Exit 87B, Wilson Road in Conroe or WeaverHyundai.com. Check out America's Best Warranty, 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain limited warranty and the Hyundai Assurance Program today. Welcome back, friends. Rob Hip here live from the Don in beautiful Huntsville, Texas. Bottom of the seventh. We are here in this game. One of the doubleheader. We'll have a pinch hitter come in here. It's Eric Bonnert, who is pinch hitting for Clayton Chadwick in that six hole. So Bonnert will lead things off to start things here in the bottom of the seventh. 
junior out of Cider Ranch and Five, Eric Bonner. So Eric Bonner, again pinch hitting here. Outfielder, 5'11", 185-pound junior out of Cypress, Texas. Cy Ranch High School, part of that triangle we talk about. First pitch on the way, drops in for a strike, 0-1. Bonnert this season, 10 at-bats, one run. Reached on three walks, struck out three times as well. Here's the next delivery. This one fouled to the net just in front of us. The count here at 0-2. James, or beg your pardon, Jaime Ramirez, who came in to relieve Hayden Thomas after two and a third. He has just been phenomenal here for the Islanders, only allowing one run, make it two actually, by Sam Houston. Here's the next pitch. This one over to right as Ryan will track it down, left glove up, and we're one away. Brings up Mason Schultz, the freshman out of League City, Texas. Mason Schultz. Mason Schultz out of League City. 265, nine hits, nine ribeyes this season, third baseman. First pitch in for a strike. Beautiful pitch there by Ramirez. 0-1 early count. Next pitch, too close to the inside on an 87 mile an hour fastball. Aces across the board. Quickly in the delivery. Pull back on the swing as the home plate umpire will check over to third. They'll say that it was a ball, two and one. Just trying to check and see if he swung around more and did not. Two one pitch on the way. Swing and a miss here to even the count of two and two. It's a nice little 80 mile an hour off speed by Ramirez. Two balls, one strike, one away here in the bottom of the seventh. The Islanders leading 12 to six. The next pitch on the way out of the left hand of Ramirez and struck him out looking. Two up, two down here for Ramirez. And the Islanders are one away from tying up this series at one to one. Responded well. Things didn't look so good after the first two innings, though. The Cats were leading 4-0. to zero. They put up all four of those in the first. Here's Wes Fulce, the new batsman. Pitch on the way to the outside. 1-0 count here on Wes Fulce. He's 0-for-1 today. Only two hits this season, averaging 111. Next pitch out of his reach as well. 2-0 count here, Wes Fulce. Here's the next pitch. This time painting the corner for a strike. Two and one. Here's the next pitch. This one too far to the outside. Bring it to a 3-1-2 count. Jaime Ramirez trying to close this one out. Here's the next pitch. And he'll reach on a walk. I think some of the Islander fans were wanting that call to strike. They didn't get that. And Wes Fulce will reach on a two-out walk here. Takes us to the bottom of the order. Ninth in the hole, the shortstop, Anthony McKenzie. McKenzie today, one for two, 139 this season average, five hits, two RBIs. Here's the first pitch on the way. Late call strike there as it was right around the number, 0-1. I think the fans were wanting that. They were wanting it to be a little bit high. Here's the next delivery, quickly in rhythm, this time to the outside to even the count at one ball and one strike. Great to see a crowd here, folks showing up. Things slowly getting back to new normal here after 
still dealing with the COVID pandemic, but this is just a sense of normalcy. People are happy to be out here on this pitch. Goes for a strike, one and two. So Ramirez is just one strike away here. Closing out this game. Islanders leading 12 to six. They have scored in every inning since the fourth. Six runs, two runs, three and one back in the top of the seventh. And now here in the bottom, the Bearcats trying to respond, trailing 12 to six. McKenzie stepped out just for a moment, now back in. Ramirez takes a deep breath. The one-two pitch on the way. This one swung, hit foul as it goes behind us. And the count remains at one and two. A little battle starting here for Anthony McKenzie. Here's the next pitch. This one chopped up. And the flip over to first from Ramirez to Marbach, and that'll do it. That'll do it for the first game of this doubleheader, 12 to 6. We'll step aside for just a couple of minutes. We'll come back and quickly break this one down as the next game coming up before too long. Stay with us. We'll have a quick post game here in a couple of minutes on the Bearcat Sports Network. They don't build cars like they used to, and they don't repair them like they used to either. Today's vehicles contain advanced lightweight materials and safety features like crumple zones and sensors that help protect your family. Repairing them properly after a collision requires up-to-date training. Amaya's Collision Center at 686 I-45 has it. They're among only 15% of shops to meet the industry's highest training standards as a gold-class business. When you pick a collision repair shop, make the smart choice for your family's safety. Choose gold-class trained repair professionals. Choose Amaya's Collision Center, 686 I-45. I-45. Eric Barbosa for Henson Ford. During truck month, we're rolling back prices on America's best-selling truck. Our low truck prices are now even lower on Fords like 2020 F-150 Super Crew, XLT, and Expeditions. Save even more with 0% for 72 months and make no payments until the summer. Plus, get a warranty for life with no deductibles and unlimited miles at no cost to you. We even deliver for free from our store to your door. We get you rolling for less at Henson Ford. We're dealer for life. Henson Ford. HensonFord.com. Welcome back, friends. Rob Pitt here. Game one of this doubleheader over as Sam Houston drops it 12 to 6. AM Corpus goes on a tear after the fourth inning. Six runs in that inning, two in the fifth, three in the sixth, and then one in the seventh, winning this one again 12 to 6. AM Corpus with 14 hits, two errors, left six on. Sam Houston, six runs, 11 hits, two errors. They leave nine on. 149 total pitches for the Islanders, 128 for Sam Houston. They threw 86 strikes, 42 balls. We talk more about this AM Corpus Christie team as Jaime Ramirez will get the win. He'll go to one and one. Matt Dillard with the loss. He'll fall to 0 and 3 now on the season. Offensive leaders for AM Corpus, as we have mentioned his name quite a bit tonight. The young man, Brendan Ryan, three for four at bat, brought in an RBI. Also, Welch, three of four, brought in one. We also saw the home run by Burks. Also, Marbach with a three-run homer back to get things really rolling here for the Islanders. For Sam Houston, Kowser, three for three at an RBI. Chadwick, two for three, two RBIs. And Trent Touche, two for three in an RBI as well. Again, I mentioned earlier, as Matt Dillard taking the loss, he finished up four and two-thirds inning pitch, eight runs, nine hits, eight of those, all eight of those runs were earned. Walked one, struck out five, allowed three doubles, one home run, a 6.84 ERA on 80 pitches. For AM Corpus, Hayden Thomas with the win. Or I beg your pardon, <laughs> Jaime Ramirez with the win. Hayden Thomas, who had the start, two and a third, five runs on seven hits, four of those were earned, walked four, struck out one. As we look at final pitching stats here, Jaime Ramirez with the win, four and two-thirds innings pitched, one run on four hits, that run was earned, walked three, struck out five, had a wild pitch, finished up with a 4.8 ERA. That'll do it for this first game. We'll go back to more music, and we'll be back before too long. Keep it tuned in right here as we'll have game two coming up before too long on the K on the Bearcat Sports Network. Friends, as I end every broadcast, 
want to remind you today that we're not strong enough alone to make it on our own. We need each other. Provide a word of encouragement. Lend a hand of support. Somebody out there needs you. Thanks to Jarris Warren back at the KSAM Studios, Jason Barfield for sitting through half of this one with me, and all the staff at Sam Houston and also back at KSAM. Good afternoon. God bless. We'll see you back here before too long on the Bearcat Sports Network. It's a new year with new opportunities. Grab metal prices are the highest in years.